I solemnly swear that I am up to no good. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 26 of Tales from Godric's Hollow, the world's most infamous Harry Potter podcast. This is December 26th. This is the 26th episode. This is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. This is chapters 9 and 10. This is the day after Christmas. Happy Christmas to everybody. I am the muggle of the show, Josh Brown. I am joined by the professor himself. I'm sorry, Matt. I don't have anything clever tonight. I'm too... My head is wrapped around a thousand different loose ends that you left me with in these two chapters that I, I cannot process anything other than just calling you Professor Matt Sonnenberg. Hello, Matt. No worries. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Indeed. Boy, oh boy. Uh, last week, um, you you let me read two chapters um, that I enjoyed. Um, you kind of pointed out that they may be uh, boring and slow-paced for other people, but I, I have... Uh, come to the realization that I like the mundane uh, day-to-day activities of Hogwarts more than most, I think. Uh, I'm, I'm at least intrigued by it, let's say. Uh, so the last couple chapters, they were, they were gravy. I, I, I enjoyed every bit of them. Um, but this week, Matt, this week. So you left, we, we, we left on a cliffhanger last week. And I was mad at you for true. it. <laughs> Very true. Um... I, I don't know if my anger level has necessarily gone down um, over time or if it's the Christmas holiday uh, or, you know, all the delicious uh, goodies I've been munching on the last few days or the fact that I just read two incredible chapters, but I'm not as mad at you this week as I am last week. That's good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, I mean, these chapters today, they... uh. They revealed some things, Matt. They did. They did. It was, I even put this in my notes, just there's a lot to digest in these two chapters. Like, they were longer chapters, but they were just filled with so much new information and new things going on, especially chapter 10 that was just, it kind of got overwhelming. I'm not going to lie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Chapter 10 was a big one. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot to take in. Yeah, we're we're getting to that kind of halfway point in the book where usually we start just revealing some things that we've talked about earlier or in a previous book or whatever the case may be. Like, they start to reveal some things. But since I it, this book is a little different because we do start to reveal some things, mm-hmm. but at the same time, we're still introducing more things and it just it, it just explodes into this. Oh, it, it's it, it can be a lot to handle. I understand. Yeah, a lot to handle. Um, it it uh, it solidified that some of my crazy theories may be in fact absolutely lunacy. Um, <laughs> it has created some more conspiracy theories on my end. Um, So there's a lot to cover, a lot to cover. We're going to get to it, Matt. We are going to get to it, I promise. Uh, But first, I want to ask you how your Christmas was. It has been pretty good. Yeah. 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 Um, Had a very brief Christmas at home with my wife before we left and uh, came down to the southern side of the states where both of our parents live. Okay. Um, So we spent Christmas eve with my side of the family uh my sister and her her kids are in town um then we got to spend christmas day with her side of the family so we had a couple of days worth of christmas and now here we are i'm back at my parents and ready to do some podcasting nice nice um uh so the the travel back and forth between the houses isn't too bad especially up in uh, the weather up there yeah, yeah. Uh, weather hasn't actually been too bad, like today. <laughs> but like we we had some some questionable weather on the drive down, mm-hmm. but we planned ahead and we we beat the storm. 
Uh, but then we got to today and all of a sudden it was 45 degrees and all the snow was melting. So, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that was our one warm day. Now it's going to be below freezing for the next week. Um, so we're back to normal. Sure. But, uh, yeah, weather has been not, not been too bad. Um, it's, it's about a three, three and a half hour drive from our house down to this area, but our parents only live about 20 minutes from each other. Oh, that's perfect. So yeah, it, it, it's not a problem once we get down here. Awesome. Well, good. Uh, I'm glad you had some nice Christmases with families and such. Um, yeah. Uh, I had a good Christmas myself. Um, all the kids had uh, a great time. Uh, got to see family. That's always nice. Uh, the best thing about this Christmas, though, and, and I'm not usually one to brag about gifts or anything like that. You know, I'm, I, I try not to. That's not my thing. I don't want to be that guy. Um, yeah. But I am incredibly hard to buy for because... If there's something I want, as you have known throughout, you know, the few years that you've known me, Matt, I, there, I just get it. Like, yeah. I, yeah. I don't, I don't wait for holidays. I don't wait for people to give me stuff. I just, I'm an adult. I have disposable income. I'm going to use that for toys and games and things that make me happy. So that makes giving presents to me extremely difficult. Which I understand, and I try not to fault anybody for having a hard time because, hey, I, I, I'm not asking for anything, so, you know, um, I apologize for being hard, but I, I, I tell people, don't worry about it. You know, that's not a big thing. Um, I, I treat myself when I want, how I want. Uh, but Val, uh, my dearest Val, um, she, she stresses every year about getting me stuff and i always tell her it's not a big thing it's not a big deal it's focus on the kids whatever but you know she she worries because i i have usually everything that i want and need this year though matt was a little different do you know what that is I, i imagine yeah, yeah. You've, you've kind of come into a new hobby a new love right perhaps. yeah uh harry potter has, has come into my life the last few months um unexpectedly kind of like a wrecking ball um just has just taken has consumed me matt and there's so much to to bring into my life that i have not had the chance really to start surrounding myself with harry potter stuff because i'm still reading the books and watching yes. the movies and going to the wizarding world of Harry Potter. And like, I I'm still trying to figure out my place in this world. Yeah. Um, you're still in the learning stages. It, yes. it, 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 it's, it, I mean, even with the knowledge you have, like if you tried to buy the, the 20 years of memorabilia <laughs> that has s stocked up in, in stores over mm -hmm. this time, like th there's no way. I mean, you wouldn't be here. You'd be broke. You'd be on the side of the road with, <laughs> Hugging all your Harry Potter stuff. Yeah. We'll read Harry Potter. And... We'll podcast for Harry Potter. Um, <laughs> so, and also, there's a lot of things that I can't buy for myself because I don't necessarily yes. know what it is. Right? Like, I see some yep. of the Funko Pops and I'm like, I know that character, but I don't understand why they're wearing that particular outfit. That's not or an it outfit says that Harry I'm Potter with. on the box, but I don't recognize that name. Right. <laughs> so, it makes it challenging for me, Matt. Um, what it did though is open up an opportunity for Valerie to uh to spread is a her Potter wings. fan. Yes, is a hot, uh, Harry Potter fan. Knows the world. Is familiar with everything. Um, and she she was able to to gift me some incredible things to uh make me feel like I am more and more a part of the world. Um, that's awesome. First thing. I'm wearing yep. a Hufflepuff scarf right now. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Because, I mean, let's be real here. Uh, it's not official until you get a scarf. Right? <laughs> I mean, my hoodie's great and all, but a scarf kind of solidifies uh, my my place at Hogwarts, I think. Um, sure. The second gift, I, I, I'm still not sure if it was more of a gag, uh, more to see my reaction. Um... Or if it's just like, you know what, you need to uh, expand your horizons as far as um, thinking about the other houses in Hogwarts. Because she got me a double pair of socks. It's a two-pack okay. hat. Uh, one with the Gryffindor logo and color scheme. 
And uh, the second one with the uh, Slytherin logo <laughs> and colors. It's a very nice green. I can see why people like the green. Sure. <sighs> but it's Slytherin, Matt. I don't... <sighs> yep. Apparently, uh, Hufflepuff socks are hard to find. But... Huh. Yeah. Uh, harder. I wouldn't have guessed say. that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Gryffindor and Slytherin, like, those are the main two, right? Yep. I mean, what's the other, what's the two pack going to be? Hufflepuff and other Hufflepuff? Like, uh, how would you even make a two pack of Hufflepuff socks? Yep. I mean, there is, there is no fourth house, so uh-huh, what are you going to do? Uh huh. Mysteriously absent. Yep. <laughs> uh, I got another pair of socks, though, Matt. Yeah. And this one is from Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Ooh. Yeah. Something uh, you know a lot about. They are the magical exposure threat level socks. Interesting. Yes, I thought so. Um, and it has the entire meter from green all the way up to red. Yep. Um, that is, uh, it's in the Makuza. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, re- I, I remember it. Yeah. Um, d- did you ever like actually read um, what the, the thing said? I, I, I tried to read as many as I could, but okay. it goes like, fast. They, they, yeah, they don't sit on that for like two right. minutes. So level one is low threat. Okay. Level two is moderate. Sure. Level three, high alert. Okay. Level four, danger. Okay. Level five, severe, unexplained activity. Mm. And then level six, straight up emergency. <laughs> So. Yeah, those are, uh, I guess, all, uh, almost seems weird that severe unexplained, uh, what was it, severe unex- unexplained activity, unexplained activity mm-hmm. is not the top. Well, I mean, that's because, like, there's something really bad happening, but we're not really sure what it is, you know? Yeah. And that's yeah. kind of where the marker is, like, indicating, like, what level they're at now. Yeah, but then emergency is like we know what's going on. This is like you know, all hands on deck type of thing. That emergency is like the end of the movie. I think, (laughs) you know, yeah, that that could be. Yeah, Um, but at the bottom, my favorite part is the little counters that they have going on. Uh, Witch hunts five hundred (laughs) thirty seven, exposures eighty two, and obliviations nine hundred and ten. Wow. Yeah. I, I actually, well, th- that can't be by the end of the movie. It has to be early on. Right. <laughs> but, I mean, you, you said, you know, they obliv- uh, obliviate people left and right, you know, like all the time. So, like, that is oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. proof in the sock that that happens all the time, Matt. <laughs> proof is in the sock. I right. like it. Yeah. Um, I also got some charms um, that she gave me. And okay. I don't know what they are yet, and she won't tell me. Can you, can you describe them? There's some symbols on them um, and some I, – I can't remember. I don't have them right here in my hand. I should have brought okay. them up. Uh, one of them is like a triangle. Okay. I know I've seen it before. I'm pretty sure I know what that is. Okay. With like a circle in the middle, I think? Uh, Yeah, probably. Maybe. Okay. And then I don't remember what the other two were for the life of me. I can't remember. But I was looking at them like, these are cool. I can't wait to find out what these are. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe you can post pictures of them for us. I will. I will. I'll do that. That'll be good. That'll um, be good. And then I also got a wand. Okay. Um, I don't know whose wand it is. And she's being very coy about it. She says she forgot. <laughs> okay. But then she said it's definitely a Hufflepuff. And I don't know if she's messing with me or not. But it's a wand. And I think it has something to do with year seven the final thing, the final chapter. Interesting. Um, but it's, uh, it has like a bunch of engravings on it. Okay. Which I don't remember like many wands, like having engravings and characters on the wand itself, you know? Yeah. There's, there's a couple for sure. Okay. Okay. So maybe I'll post a picture of that too. And Yeah. That, that'd be nice. I, I'd like to take a look at it. But, you know, there's a chance that it's, like, a wand that I'm going to know about, but I can't know about yet. And yeah. that's why she's not yeah. telling me. I I completely understand why she's, yeah, avoiding too much. Sure. I, <laughs> Val, I thank you for that whenever you get to listen to this. Yeah. So, but she had fun. She had fun buying little things for me that I would enjoy and have some familiarity with, but not necessarily um, fully know what they are yet. So... 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, uh, a Hufflepuff sticker. I got a Hufflepuff oh. sticker for my laptop. Awesome. Yeah. I forgot about that. Etsy's a, a wonderful place for Harry Potter stuff, <laughs> I, I heard. It, it, it is. There's there's a lot of fans out there. Yeah. A lot of crafty people. Yeah. So I am not one of them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, good. You know, there are plenty of people out there that are and good for them. But um, yeah. So uh, a Harry Potter Christmas, Matt, who would have thunk? Yeah. You know, <laughs> that that would be a Christmas for me, you know? Yeah, for me, I mean, it was a no-brainer. I, I I did get a few items I have post pictures of already. Mm-hmm. Um, the from the Funko Pop line, the, the Funko rides. Um, I think they came out in time for last Christmas, even. Um, the the Hogwarts Express. All oh, right. With the characters riding in them, mm-hmm. so I got I two of the three cars. So I got the engine and one of the cars on the train. Nice. Um, so that 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 was definitely nice. I. It, th- there are pieces that like I really really wanted, but th- they're all those rides are always a little bit more expensive, and I'm like, you know, those who make good presents, because like that's another thing. Like my family is always looking for presents, present ideas, and I'm like, okay, here you go. Right. And uh, my sister works part time at a, a a game store that actually stocks a lot of Funko Pop. Oh, nice. And so it works out very nicely for her because she she always gets like first dibs on sure. stuff. So. Uh, yeah, that worked out well. Um, awesome. So I, I, I did get my, my hands on a few new Potter items as well. And, and see, for fans, like, I'm sure for, like, lifelong fan, fans, like, it's hard to buy new Harry Potter merchandise at this point. Like, unless you're going, like, the Fantastic Beast route. Yeah. Um, a lot of stuff, like, you would already have. They're not coming out with tons of new Harry Potter stuff on a regular basis, I don't think. Yeah, not so not so much. The the basic memorabilia has been out there for a while. Um, now there's people like me who I, I've always been a Harry Potter fan, but I haven't always collected everything Harry Potter. Mm, yeah. And so there's just there's a big backlog of stuff I still need or want. Sure. Um, uh, like, like yeah, they're not putting out Harry Potter Lego actively, really. Right. The right. The, the bulk of that has already been released. Mm-hmm. Um. The, the big one, though, is the Harry Potter Funko because they just started putting those out like two years ago. Okay. Uh, and so th- those are all new. Like they started out, they're like on their third set of just regular uh, pop figures. And then they have like the mystery minis and they have, I think they might have a few keychains and uh, then the the rides with the train that I, that I just got. Mystery uh, maze. Yeah. There's Harry Potter mystery minis. Oh, minis. I thought you said yeah. the mystery maze. I'm like, what's oh, the mystery no, maze, no. Matt? <laughs> <laughs> mystery minis. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. We'll stop the podcast to talk about something I'm not allowed to talk about. <laughs> I don't know what this mystery maze is, but I'm intrigued. Yeah. Yeah, that 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 would be interesting. <laughs> um, I'm sure we could find that on a map somewhere. Uh uh-huh. Speaking of which, let's talk about these chapters, Matt. We should do that. Chapters 9 to 10 of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, Chapter 9, mm-hmm. titled Grim Defeat. Mm. We it's actually... A, it's a very sombering chapter name. Yeah. Um, it, interesting lead into it. Like, even going through the chapter, like, it, 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 I guess its name is different than a lot of the chapter names we've seen up to this point. Yeah. It's not as clear necessarily. Like I understand where she's going with it, where she got the title, but it's still not on the same level as other <laughs> chapter titles. It, it took me until about the end of the chapter to re- really figure out what was going on with the the title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In any case, uh, we do actually have one new character, Madam Hooch. Uh, <laughs> no. Oh. Really? We we've met her a number of times. Okay. Yeah, she she's she's the she referees most of the Quidditch matches. Um and she also taught them how to fly in the first book. Oh, okay. Yeah. Her name sounded super familiar, but I could not remember who she was for the life of me. Yeah, typically it's just a a quick um mention like at the beginning of a Quidditch match, it's like and Madam Hooch released the quaffle, or Men Hooch blew the whistle, or something like that. Um, 
but yeah, the, the the big the first entrance I think we get of her is when they're learning to fly in okay. the first book. Okay, is that her like only job there at Hogwarts? Is as far as I can tell, yeah, she okay. she's essentially in charge of anything related to brooms. And that's why it always kind of surprises me a little, like. If that is her own, own only job, like as far as I know, she doesn't teach anything else. Right. Uh, so it, it seems kind of odd. Like we hear about Hagrid defrosting the broomsticks. Yeah. And that kind of thing. It seems like that almost seems like it should be Madame Hooch's job. Right. Or part of her job. But she's not professor. Uh, she's never referred to as professor. Yeah. N- never, never addressed that way. It's always okay. Madame. Okay. But at the same time, I mean, that's kind of how we get um, like Madame Hooch. Or not Madame Hooch. Sorry, Madame Pomfrey. <laughs> Okay. Um, like she, she's the nurse. She right. doesn't actually teach anything and like learning to fly on a broomstick, I guess, isn't necessarily a, a class or a subject. It's not something they do constantly. It, like I, she's I think like the PE kind of, teacher is what we're saying. Basically, except okay. like it, it, it's from, from what we hear, it's, it almost sounds like something you learn in your first year and then you don't take it again. Right. You don't get a refresher course on how to fly a broomstick. It's not something they're taking every week. Hmm. So it, it's kind of like introduction to brooms, and then here you go. Hmm. And then okay. I'll see you again if you play Quidditch. Oh, she has a sweet gig. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Okay, so uh, who's the new character then? Our new character this week is Cedric Diggory. Mm. He also just got a mention, really. Um, but we find out that he is the seeker for the Hufflepuff team. Right. Who knew? Yeah, Hufflepuff's and how to play Quidditch. Yep. <laughs> Apparently he, he, he's big and he's good. Yeah. That's what, what they, what they tell us. Well, especially in that kind of weather. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, chapter nine, uh, Starts off with a uh, uh, quote unquote students from Ravenclaw mention. Um, <laughs> I, I I had that note. <laughs> Ravenclaws <laughs> exist. I think we've gotten more mentions of Ravenclaw um, in these two chapters, and still like no specifics about Ravenclaw at all. Um, so it's, it's kind of just like teasing me. I think. Sure, but um, I, I just had to put that in there because. One day, one day I'll get proven wrong, Matt. I just don't think it's this book. Um, apparate. Yes. We got an apparate mention. We did. And yeah. it was quickly shot down, but. Yes. However, <laughs> with my knowledge of Fantastic Beasts and where to find them now, like that whole scenario is much different knowing what I know of apparating. Yes. Which is fun to think about. Yeah, you you have a, a visual in your head. You can kind yeah. of picture what they were talking about, what right. they think happened. Sure. Um, okay, my first real question, though. Yep. Uh, there is mention of Filch restoring the fat lady. Sure. I don't know what that means. Does Does that mean restoring the painting that she was once in does that mean picking up the painting that she's currently in and physically walking it over to (laughs) the door because he's a squib he can't do magic so i don't know how he's going to like restore her from one painting to another yeah yeah um it's really just restoring her painting her original one that got shredded yeah basically you you think of each person in a painting has a home. Their mm-hmm. home is their original painting. Right. And like we saw Sir Cadigan running from painting to painting. <laughs> uh, when when Sirius Black came in and slashed her painting, mm-hmm. she ran out of it. Right. And she she was hi- she was found hiding in another painting. Mm-hmm. And so it, it's essentially restoring her home. Okay. Re- restoring her painting so she can come back to it. I think it was just written to make it sound like the, he he was restoring her and not necessarily her painting. So I was confused sure. how he could do that without magic. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's really just her painting. Okay. Yeah, she, she she herself is is fine. She's just off in a different painting. Sure. 
Um, like I said, I think I, I think they said she's you know kind of shaking up, but uh, she'll recover. So right. Uh, Sir Cadigan. Yes, Speaking he returns. <laughs> uh, he's back at it as crazy as ever, isn't he? Yep. <laughs> Unfortunately, not quite as helpful as he's been in the past. He's trying to be. He thinks he is. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's the best part about him. He just doesn't realize how um, uh, not helpful he actually is. <laughs> Changing the password multiple times during the day. Yeah, and that that goes to answer a question I believe you had a couple episodes ago about like who comes up with the passwords and yeah. how often they change them and stuff. And like, obviously, this is not normal. I mean, like, I think <laughs> right. we decided, you know, that the, the people in the paintings actually come up with the passwords and mm-hmm. tell you when they're changed and such. But yeah, changing them twice a day, coming up with complicated passwords, it's just yeah, not right. normal. Now, when they change them, they would have to tell the prefects, right? It, that's kind of what I've, I've always assumed I that they they would just t- tell the prefects and then uh, they would let the other students in the house know one way or another. I don't know if they post it inside the, the <laughs> dorm or what. <laughs> but what if you're works, like, <laughs> what if you're out and about the password changes, you come back and you haven't gotten word what the new password is like this well, is yeah, exactly I'm, why it's <laughs> just a mess. At- we, we, we've run into that a few times like. um like when I, I I think that was actually did that actually happen? Neville when they well no when they when they ran into the the painting, um and the fat lady was gone so everybody's crowded around outside and like mm-hmm. Percy walks up and he's like the new password is this 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 just go in right, but like I I think he, that, that's that's kind of what what he was doing, um obviously there was a different problem but sure. Yeah, that that apparently isn't necessarily all that uncommon that either someone forgets or <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like I said, Neville, yeah, he obviously has a problem. He right. <laughs> forgets everything. So uh, I'm I'm pretty sure he didn't actually go into the Gryffindor house at all during this time. <laughs> like there's no way he was gonna re like if he's changed if uh Sir Gannigan's changing the password uh, you know, a few times a day and making them complicated, there's no way Neville's ever getting inside. Yeah, unless he's with a group of people, you know. Exactly. Well, I think that's that's what he does, and that's that's why he's always hanging around with uh, <laughs> our trio. And it's like, oh, they'll remember the password. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I I can't wait to see. Again, I'm there's a chance I'm going to say this, and uh, it's going to be just wrong. Um, and unfortunately, but like I I look forward to seeing Sir Cadigan represented in the film sure and i really hope he is because i I mean i don't necessarily know how much of a part he plays like when it comes down to the grand scheme of things um i mean the films can't even bother to put um uh not percy uh the poltergeist peeves peeves the poltergeist they can't even bother to put him in the film yep you know will they bother with sir cadigan i don't know I hope so. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, if you think about it so far, though, like, Peeves, they, they've been able to get away without him. Mm-hmm. He he does have some, some times where he interacts more than others, but ultimately he's never really a part of the main story. Right. Like, they've been able to get away with it. So, but Sir Cadigan here, like, it's kind of a big deal with the fat lady running away and such. So yeah, but it, then again, I mean, and I don't know. Maybe they have peeves in this film, but like the moment when the fat lady is now gone and they realize that Sirius true. Black it's has true. been in Hufflepuff. I mean, or not Hufflepuff in Hogwarts. <laughs> I'm in Hufflepuff state of mind here, Matt. Um, sure. Peeves was right there to you know. Yep, to he break was it the down, one that announced it. Yeah, which I would consider a big part of the story. It's true, yeah. That, so, that that would be a valid argument, I would say. But it, it, I think it would be almost even stranger to start including Peeves now when we haven't seen him in the first two movies. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Especially since, since, as we've covered a few times already, like the first movie didn't come out until after the fourth book. Sure. So they would have known all of that up to this point already, and they could have you know, made a long-term decision 
right. if they want him in or not, if they were planning that far ahead, which I hope they did. But Right. Well, Sir Cadigan seems just goofy enough to be a good movie uh, character, so let's hope for the yeah. best with him, because he's we making some kids' life miserable right now, and that's hilarious. <laughs> um, Snape. Snape. Matt, I, I I know I said this last week, but I am having the most trouble <laughs> understanding why in the world you would like this guy. I don't. Yep. It's he's so bad, Matt. He's horrible. He is. He is. He's he's now taking over defense of the dark arts temporarily. Um, he kind of um early in the chapter. I think he was hinting at possibly blaming Lupin for Sirius Black getting into Hogwarts. He didn't directly that, say it, but n- no, but that's he, yeah, he 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 definitely kind of implied it. Yeah, kind of hinted at it, right? Yeah. Kind of got cut off before he said it. Yeah. And they have a weird relationship those two. I don't really know what's going on with them yet, but now Lupin's sick, which that worries me because last we knew he was drinking potions made by Snape yep, to help that, him that get w- better. In theory, getting him better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now he's sick and not, uh, not happy with that, Matt. And now Snape's taking over Defense of the Dark Arts class, which he's yep. always wanted to do. Snape's dream come true. And he suddenly realizes that all the kids are being um, held back by their uh, by their teachers. Well, I mean. <laughs> You can't really blame Lupin so much. It's it's a, their first two years where they didn't really learn anything. <laughs> They're basically in defense of the dark arts one hundred and one right now. Yeah, as third like, years. I, like I kind I kind of wonder how that works. It's like, d- does their curriculum actually span multiple years, or when they got into second year, should they have just, regardless of what they learned first year, do they just jump into it or? Right. Because they're it's all the sa- they know it's all the same students and they're required to take this class. Like, do they just start where they left off the previous year? And right. if that's the case, yeah, they're, they're probably in Defense 101. <laughs> There's no way Lockhart was going to get to werewolves, but... <laughs> no. <laughs> Snape's like, no, we need to talk about werewolves. And and you can't get expect Lupin to catch up that much in, what What are we in, maybe three, three four months into school or something? Right. He's doing his best, from what I understand, you know. Yeah, we, we've we've had, like we said, we had so many more practical lessons yeah. already. Yeah. From Lupin. But Snape is just uh he's a flat out jerk here, Matt. He um he doesn't want to hear what Harry has to say. Yeah. Um, he doesn't want to listen to Ron. He doesn't want to listen to the know it all Hermione. Like he's not taking any guff from any of the kids, even though they are doing their best. To not only stick up for Lupin, but kind of like stick up for themselves too. Like it seems like collectively they're all kind of just sick of being bullied by this teacher. Yeah. But ultimately, he's wielding the power of points, and uh, that that makes everybody kind of just you know fall into line. Yep. The cup. Yeah, man, I mean, it's, uh, but like. Eventually, I mean, he he's gonna jump past points and go into like detentions or suspensions right. or more homework or something. Yeah, and it's just it, it, there's there's no good way around it. He he has the power mm-hmm. and he's not afraid to use it. Yeah. So he gets on a roll. He's just dishing out negative points and detentions left and right. Like he's just shutting everybody down. Um, but the fascinating thing about this this class that he is teaching. Was the werewolf aspect? Yeah, it was kind of like casually mentioned. Like it was explained that like this is, you know, probably end of the year higher um, curriculum type of stuff you should be learning about. Um, but still, like it's it's. I shouldn't be surprised that there's werewolves, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> but well, we, yeah, I mean, we, we've had mentions of werewolves, like. When they're going into the forest, yeah, that's true. It's like there's werewolves in there. Yeah, right? that that might maybe to me sounded more of like a scare tactic type of thing. Yeah, but like we've seen vampires, uh, werewolves just seem like 
you know, we've even had like mummy references. Like it's true. They're like traditional monsters. Yeah. You know, like yeah. the classic monsters. The the universal monsters. Yeah. yeah, and and to me, like the Wizarding World of Harry Potter feels more expanded and greater than having to rely on the traditional mainstream monsters that we know of and are afraid of. Yeah, but I think that it, it's nice that they're kind of mixed in there. Like we don't really focus on them nearly as much as right. we do the um, man. I can't even think of stuff now. Uh, like hippogriffs or uh, what other creatures have it? fluffy and that type of thing. Like mm, basilisk. We, yep, the basilisk. We, we get those things a little bit more of those things. We we spend more time on them than we do these other as you call them like traditional beasts mm -hmm. or, or traditional monsters that we have um so i mean it, it, it's it's good i guess it's good to reference them once in a while to say yeah these still exist right it, it kind of ties it back to i mean <laughs> i was gonna say ties it back to reality it's like <laughs> well, yeah, wait, it, wait, it does wait. it grounds it yeah it's it, it's it's not completely like it doesn't feel quite as much fantasy then. It's right. like, oh, this is stuff we, we already know about. Like, mm -hmm. wait, this does exist. Yeah. Alongside all these other magnificent creatures that we're learning about too. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely one of those things that reminds me that these, these worlds take place simultaneously together, you know, yeah. in sync. Um, but it's just, I, now I'm like super curious about like what their idea about werewolves are. Um, yeah, that, that that one in particular. I mean, werewolves and vampires are so many different <sighs> variations on them. Mm -hmm. I mean, like like you think vampires, there's there's Twilight vampires versus Buffy the Vampire Slayer vampires. Right. Yeah. Like they they're not the same. Yeah. Um, I can't remember which film it was from but there was a film with uh werewolves in it and their interpretation of werewolves uh instead of growing the fur and growing um into the wolf like creature um they would actually shred their human skin and like the werewolf would be underneath oh yeah and it's like a very same concept, but kind of a different spin on it to where you think of like, you know, these creatures are just like ripping off of their flesh and yeah. underneath are like werewolves. Um, different way to think about it. So like every time I think about werewolves, I have like these, these different mental images of what kind of werewolf it is and like how different people interpret werewolves to be. So I'm like super curious what werewolves in the Harry Potter world, um, you know, what JK actually imagines when she yeah, writes about yeah. werewolves that that would, that would yeah definitely be interesting and i don't know if we'll ever see it or not or know more <laughs> about the werewolves but it, 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 i i am fascinated by other people's interpretations of these things so yeah i can't say i've ever heard something like that but yeah i wish i could remember which movie it was from but i remember seeing it and be like that is awesome that's a cool way to do that sure super gross but you know <laughs> still it's it's different and that makes you pay more attention to it immediately yeah um yeah uh one day matt one day we are going to sit down and have a heart to heart about why snape is your favorite character and i just dread that it's going to be in a couple years that it's going to have to like go that long before i fully realize everything yeah yeah unfortunately i yeah i probably won't be anytime soon yeah it's just hard at this point for you to defend your, your yep. loving of this character. Yep. And you know that. I know that. <laughs> but it's tough for me, Matt. It is. It's tough. Because I just... Very few redeeming qualities in these three books so far. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Uh, Quidditch? Quidditch. Quidditch in the rain. Yeah, so before we even get to the Quidditch match, uh -huh. I, I it was rescheduled, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It was originally supposed to be Gryffindor versus Slytherin. Right. But 
that changed. Mm -hmm. Why did that change? Injuries, Matt. Yeah. Since what in in what sport is an injury <laughs> grounds to cancel or postpone a match? Professional wrestling. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I <laughs> like it, it just doesn't make sense. Like, because we've even seen this in Harry Potter already. Mm -hmm. You remember Harry's first year? Yeah. When he was unconscious in the hospital wing. Right. They had played without him. They played without him. Yeah. It's like, um, yeah, it was, I think it's, they said it was like their worst defeat in like 300 years. Right. Yeah. Like. How on earth does, oh, my arm hurts, and they, they cancel the match? Well, here's the thing, Matt. Everybody assumed Hufflepuff was going to lose no matter what. No matter when Hufflepuff played Gryffindor, it was going to be uh, a, Hufflepuff, a Hufflepuff loss, right? It, well, Wood wasn't so sure about that. Right, but, but I mean, you know, the, the I don't know if it's... Uh, Madam Hooch or whoever's working on the scheduling, you know, and whatnot. She's like, look, Hufflepuff, Hufflepuff, you're just going to lose. So it, it doesn't matter if we do this match now or if we do it in two weeks. Like, the loss is still going to be a loss. Let's just get this out of the way now. Let's make sure Gryffindor has a full team. Make sure Slytherin has a full healthy team. And let's let these two titans of the Quidditch pitch go head-to-head -head in the battle of the cup uh, with all you know, everything on the line, let's make it important, let's make it special. All these other secondary matches, you know, between Hufflepuff and anybody else that may want to play Quidditch, uh, you know, those matches are insignificant compared to the matchup that everybody's waiting for. So, you know, if there's an injury, you know, we don't want to just give it to Gryffindor. That's not fair, you know. Also, I bet Madame Hooch is a Slytherin. Let's just put it out there. <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, I, I think Snape and or Lucius Malfoy has something to do with this. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they both there. did. Yeah. Because, yeah, that, that's the only way this is going to get by. Because I, I, to me, otherwise, to, to relate this to terms that we, we were just talking about this before the show, this would be like waiting six months uh, for Derek Carr's leg to heal before <laughs> we play the playoffs. That's true. That's very like true. That, that's not going to happen. That doesn't happen. No. It's like, these are also done... kids at school, you know? Yeah. Not professional athletes. Oh. I understand your frustration, though. Malfoy is just... He's just a ball of something, isn't he? He just yep. manages to manipulate and warm his way into um, favoring situations for him and his fellow Slytherin and continues to stick it to Harry and Gryffindor as much as he possibly can. Um, and ultimately, Harry always gets the worst of it. Right. That, 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 that's the biggest problem. Yeah. But let's be real here, Matt. Going into this match, Huff Buff didn't have a chance. That I mean, that that's what the bulk of Gryffindor thought. <laughs> they, they thought they were still going to be okay. Sure. Uh, Wood gave him the warning. That's when we got mention of Cedric Diggory. Right. And it's like, he, he's their new seeker, their captain. He's big and he 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 can fly. Right, especially in this weather, he's not gonna get you know blown around on his, on his broom. Like he's he's a sturdy, just you know, he he's Marshawn Lynch. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> you can't knock that guy over. Um, but it's still Hufflepuff, Matt. Like nobody actually thinks Hufflepuff has a chance here. I mean, Oliver is just like trying to make sure that like his team stays focused and doesn't. Uh, you know, they don't take a week off. They don't take a bye week going into, like, the playoffs. You know, like, sure. th he wants them sharp. He wants them at the top of their game, regardless of the weather. It's going to be miserable for everybody. It's not just them that's rained on. You know, everybody out there is getting rained on, and it's miserable. But he's like, you know, we got to stay focused. He's, he's he's being a good captain, and I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Um, Now I have a question. Okay, I know we're at a school that's based on magic. Yep. Right? Everything that goes on at Hogwarts and the surrounding area is magical in some way, shape, or form. Yep. Um, Quidditch itself is played on flying brooms. 
uh, with a little creature that flies around, you know, its own AI, essentially. Um, there's a lot of magical things happening within a Quidditch match in yes. itself. Regular, straight-up Quidditch match. Yeah. However, where in the rules do they talk about the use of of magical spells in a Quidditch match? Uh, well, that's something we don't really have access to at this time. Like, yeah. We, we, we know there are like over 700 fouls that can be committed. Right. Um, but we, we don't actually have the Quidditch rule book to right. look at. So we it's kind of it. hard to say. We need it, Matt. Yeah. Because Hermione used a magical spell to make water repel off Harry's glasses. Yep. And while that's a great thing, and Oliver Wood seemed to applaud the move, I kind of feel like that's cheating, and I don't know how I feel about that. It, it kind of feels like it, but a couple of things going on. Like I, I kind of feel like Oliver is the type of guy who knows the rule book backwards and forwards. Yeah. And he he wants to win fairly, that's for sure. Right. He, he wants to win, but yeah. he wants to win <laughs> fairly. Which one does he want more, though? Yeah, so I mean, like, it. I feel that it, he would at least have like spoke up if some if he thought something was going on mm-hmm. that shouldn't be. I I think maybe maybe that's part of the reason that's in there. Yeah, it, like giving his approval, kind of like that. It, like, oh, okay, that's okay. Um, I guess we, we we don't really hear about that many people who wear glasses, right? So it's not that big of a deal for a lot of other people. But I guess where does the line get drawn uh, as to yeah, what's I, fair I, I and mean, what's not? Like, could you put a spell what, on that what, repels what, what, water from a broomstick so your hands don't slip off of it, you know? or Yeah, it, like it, it, it kind of sounds to me like just when she does the spell, it, it, the first thing that comes to my mind, once again, because it's football season, <laughs> it is like it, putting stick on glo- gloves. Right. But like it, th- that's what it feels like. Sure, it, it is that that little little extra boost that you're giving one player. It's like, oh, now you have no problem catching the ball. Right. It, it's like, okay, now we're, we're gonna put this little extra substance, this this little spell on your glasses, mm-hmm. and that's gonna give you essentially give you an edge over other players. Yeah. Although at the same time, it's probably just bringing it up to a level playing field. Right. Because Harry couldn't see because the brain was building a lot of his glasses, whereas other people weren't wearing glasses, so who knows exactly how it worked out but but like you know it or could you look at it as like um a pitcher in baseball you know rubbing a little pine tar on a baseball to give it a, a little bit more curve to strike out batters you know like then yeah. the edge is given you're not bringing the pitcher up to you know being fair but you're giving him the advantage oh, like What's to say a spell can't be used to improve somebody's sight of the snitch, you know, to to enhance, you know, magnify sight or uh, a little extra strength in, uh, you know, uh, just th- there's so many different spells that could be used that you wouldn't actually physically see or get caught doing. And that just uh, it makes me wonder about the whole sport. I think the whole thing is corrupt, Matt. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Quidditch is a corrupt sport, and I'm now uh, very skeptical about the fairness of each Quidditch match, front to back. Sure, there's rampant cheating going on, and I don't think there's any way to fully resolve it. Uh, it it's like baseball in the '90s, late '90s. Everybody's on steroids, Matt. Just you just have to accept the way it is, whether you like it or not. This is this is the new game. Yeah, I don't like it, Matt. That's fair. I can I, I can see where you're coming from. Cheaters never prosper. Yep, especially in this match. Yeah, I like I I would like to say I mean kind of like I said with Wood that like Hermione too is is our goody two shoes of the book, mm-hmm. but time and time again we've seen her kind of cross that line. Yeah. It's like we we said Ron and Harry kind of pushed her over. And... <laughs> she, she's so, definitely hung out with too many Weasleys in her day. Yeah, for for her to do something that was in a gray area, perhaps mm-hmm. is, I, I wouldn't put her past her 
put a pastor to take that initiative right. and uh, do it on her own. So, right. and you know, it wasn't like for Harry's safety either. You know, it wasn't like he's going to die unless I'm able to make sure he can see clearly. It's he can't find the snitch because he can't see clearly. So I'm going yep. to fix that. Yeah. You know, I, I could understand if like his glasses were broke and like she repaired them again for him. Which she has so many times. Yes. Right. You know, like it was like a safe, like he's going to run into the side of a building uh, or crash into the ground unless I do something to help him out here. It's just like, no, he's having a hard time seeing the snitch. We can't win unless he catches the snitch. Let's fix that. Yep. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit, Matt. I understand. But in the end, Matt, huh, full puff, huh, full puff, huh, full puff. You got your victory. We are the champions, Matt. This is this is the Mighty Ducks uh esque victory. Nobody saw it coming. We just went flying V on them in the Quidditch and the underdogs won, Matt. Yep. It's a great victory. It's a great day to be a Hufflepuff. <laughs> now okay. It wasn't exactly a dominating victory. No. I mean, it didn't help that hundreds of Dementors were out on the Quidditch pitch trying to kill Harry Potter. <laughs> I yep. mean, that might have had something to do with the victory. It but it's not like difference. It's not like the Hufflepuff summoned them in, though. It's not like, you know, no. they called the Dementors in to get this job done. What a What a crazy scene, though. Yeah. Just looking down sure. and seeing hundreds of Dementors in... Uh, how many Dementors are there? I am now. This whole time, I was picturing like maybe a dozen tops. Yeah, around Hogwarts, right? Yep. That's that's how I envisioned it. You know, like they're they're bad enough and horrible enough to where like you don't need hundreds, like more than a hundred of these things in one given area to get the job done. Yes and no. I mean, I I, I kind of wonder how good their vision is. Yeah. Um, for one, so like, how much of an area can you actually expect them to cover? Mm -hmm. But the second thing you have to remember is the the Hogwarts grounds are quite vast. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we only talk about little pieces here and there, but the, I mean, the castle itself is big. Sure. And then when you factor in, like, the, when they run out to Hagrid's hut, like, it's it's not sitting right next to the castle. There's a big open field. Right, right. And, and so that that's further out. And then you got the forest, which they might not necessarily be covering the entire forest, but it it's it's out there too. Sure, sure. Um, the and then lake. At, Yep, you got the lake, you got the, the Quidditch pitch, which mm -hmm. isn't right next to the school either, and the Quidditch pitch itself is pretty big. Right. And you, I, I, I don't get the idea, at least, that that's, like, right at the edge of the grounds either. Yeah. Like, I, I, I have a feeling there, there's more area. Like, I, I, I expect that the Hogwarts, Hogwarts grounds are quite vast. Right. And so yeah you have them planted like at the entrances but i also think that because of th they don't know how Sirius black escaped uh in the first place mm -hmm. i mean what's to say how he's going to enter so i would cover every square inch of the boundaries sure sure with these dementors i guess so uh, that makes a lot of sense in my head though i just saw it like if you oh, yeah. looked I, out Hogwarts, you don't see, you know, just Dementors everywhere. Definitely. And, and I, I think part of it is um, that they're not right up next to the castle. Right. I, I, I will admit, when when I've first read through, like, yeah, I, I probably pictured maybe a dozen or two. Sure. A couple at each entrance here yeah, and there. It's yeah. spread out. Sure. Yeah, whatever. But, you know, more, more you think about it, like, they have a lot of area to cover. Uh, we, we don't necessarily see them all the time because... We, we hear time again that Dumbledore does not allow them near the castle. Right. It's like, right. yes, you can find you can protect the grounds. You can keep an eye out for them, but you can't come in the castle. You can't come near near the, the students and that type of thing. You, you got to stay away from them. 
You're right. Like, I, I don't like that you're even this close to Hogwarts. But, but if you're going to be, at least, yeah. Yeah. Give it a little like, distance. Just, just surround the perimeter. Fine. So then the bigger question is, if there's this many out there roaming around, right? Yep. Doing their thing. Yep. What drew all of them, or a large portion of them, all to the Quidditch pitch at once? What got uh, them there? Yeah. That, that is definitely a good question. Sirius Black hiding in plain sight? <laughs> Did he disguise himself as the snitch? <laughs> that would be a trick. I mean, that's one way to get around. Yeah. Only a few people could even see you anyway. Um, Something. Something brought them to the Quidditch pitch. You know, was it just Harry leaving the confines of the castle and, and venturing outward that drew them out? Um, I mean, they're not there for Harry, though. No, but there's definitely a connection because there was tons of them, right? And yep. he felt some awful things happening yep. to himself that nobody else did that we know of. Yeah. So I don't know if he, they're necessarily coming after him, but there's definitely a connection that he has with them. Yes. So I don't know what that connection is yet. Well, uh, not in this chapter. Right. Um, but, I mean... <sighs> What brought what brought all of them there to the Quidditch pitch just all of a sudden? Was it just the activity of that there being that many people all in one gathering? So like, hey, we gotta we gotta, you know, make sure everybody's safe here or we gotta check out everything. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Well, we'll get some answers shortly. Yeah. He heard a voice in his head. He did. A woman screaming. Yep. He's heard this before. <sighs> I put in my notes, is it his mom? Question mark? Harry definitely thinks so. Found out that, yeah, I mean, in the next chapter we found out definitely it was his mom. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when she's screaming, like, don't kill Harry. Like, right, yeah. Who, who, who else has screamed that? Sure. But, I mean, he now, doesn't know if it's a memory per se. I mean, there's some exactly, weird things happening to exactly. him left and right. I mean, we, we are getting into divination now, too. So yeah. is it the future? Right, it's good. Ooh, that's a good call, Matt. It's a good call. Don't know. Um, but the main thing in this chapter, Matt, the, the big, the big takeaway point of chapter nine, the grim defeat, which, as we talked about, is very um, weird to think about until you realize that Harry saw a grim while he was flying around playing Quidditch. Yep. Um, which I had forgotten that those things were called Grimm's. <laughs> so, like, I had to piece it together as to what he saw back when he almost got ran over by the night bus. Yep. Uh, so, a nice little callback to, to something that has been talked about in this book, but not heavily hit on on a regular basis. Like, it's been a few chapters since we talked about the Grimm's. Yes. Uh, but the big thing, Matt, of Chapter 9 is the Hufflepuff victory. So... <laughs> uh, I mean, just congratulations to Team Hufflepuff for, for being outstanding Quidditch players. Who knew they had it in them? They did. They did. Yeah. They played their, their little hearts out, Matt. The game of their lives. The one that mattered. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, we found out Whomping Willow doesn't like to be hit by things. Yeah, something we already knew, but uh, <laughs> found out the hard way once again. Yeah, it, it, it kind of takes out his frustrations on uh, things that come close to it and smack up against it. Yeah, well, the, well, the enchanted car could uh, take a beating yeah. and still drive off. Uh, Harry's broomstick, not so lucky. Splintered dozens of pieces. Don't mess with the Wampy Willow. I think that's uh, that's today's lesson, Matt. Yep. But that also leads us to chapter 10. Chapter 10. Chapter 10, the Marauder's Map. The Marauder's Map. Do we have any new characters? We do. Right. We do have a few. 
Um, just a brief mention of a boy named Davy Gudgeon. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I believe, if I recall, this is another kind of throwaway character. Uh, he, he just a classmate of Professor Lupin back in the day. He is telling a story about. Um, then we got a not a trio, but a uh, I guess quartet. Sure. Of uh, fellows here mm-hmm. that go by the names Messrs. Mooney, Wormtail, Padfoot, and Prongs. Right. Don't really know much about them. Not at all. But, uh, yep, got a mention of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe this is the first time, the, the next two names, I, I'm pretty sure this is the first time we've met them. Okay. Um, correct me if if you think I'm wrong here, but okay. Madam Ro- Rose Murda? The first time. Okay. Mm-hmm. And Peter Pettigrew? Definitely a first time. Okay. Yeah, I I was pretty sure that was the first time for yes. both of them. Um, obviously, once again, they, like they, I, I I didn't go back and check my notes on the on these two guys. I, I was pretty certain, but at the same time, there there are names that I know so well that it's like <laughs> sure, yeah, I, I've I've been through the books. I, I they're in the movies. I'll tell you that. So it's like, um, it, it like it, it it just got me. It's like, wait, do I have to? Think about the. Uh, I mean, the yeah, Peter Pettigrew one down. feels like if it was ever mentioned, it was like in passing really quickly without any, you know, uh, further explanation. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it was just mostly because like we, we've talked about the situation where he's brought up again, mm-hmm. and I couldn't remember if they mentioned him the first time through. Right. So. Yeah. <sighs> this chapter is deep, Matt. It is. There's, There's a lot going on here. This chapter could be a podcast in itself. <laughs> so we're we're gonna try not to 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 break down every bit of information here, but there's a lot to cover. There's a lot of important things to cover here. Yeah, there are definitely some things we need to cover. We're gonna do our best. Um, first off, I, I just need to tell you a little anecdote here. Um, Marauder's map, right? Okay. Sounds familiar to me when we start off the chapter. Not sure. sure why. Okay. Yep. So Val, she's like, should sound familiar to you. We'll talk about it in a second when we get there. I'm like, okay. Um, then she reminded me once we once we found out what the Marauders map actually was, that when we were at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter last month. Uh, yep. We were going through one of the gift shops, and she was fixated on this map, and it was <laughs> called the Marauder's Map. And there's two different versions of it, okay? Yeah. There was a regular one, and then there was one that was, like, animated. Yes. And I was asking her, one, what's a Marauder's Map? Can't tell you. Two, why is one of them an- animated? Like, why would a map <laughs> need to be animated? And she was like, oh, God, I wish I could tell you right now. Yes. Um, and that was one of those moments where she said, just wait until book three. I was like, mm. So I've had a conversation about a Marauder's map. I've seen a Marauder's map with no context. It meant nothing. Yeah. Once I found out what it was, though. Poof, yep. Yeah. Yep. Fantastic things. Also, also, we need to point out. That the musical intros and outros of this very podcast that we're recording here include some phrases. They do. That I have been 100% oblivious to until now. (laughs) I was really hoping you would remember that. Like, I don't know how much you listen to the podcast yourself or how much, like, when you're putting those intros in there. Every week. You actually listen to them play? Every week. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I I was curious to see if you would pick up on that, and it's like, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. this is the week. Yep. Uh, so now editing the podcast, like, to, to pull the curtain back a little bit here, is going to be super weird knowing, like, what all I'm actually putting together here. Yes. One of these days, I'm going to know what Deathly Hollows is. Uh, <laughs> but for now, uh, I solemnly swear that I am up to no good, and mischief manage means so much more 
And can, so you, much can you see why I put them there? Yes, I absolutely can. And it upsets me that I had to wait 26 <laughs> episodes to find out why, Matt. Oh, but yeah, I, I, I'm just hoping that other Harry Potter fans enjoy that as much as I did. Like, it, it's not an idea that popped into my mind right away. It was something that came down the road as we were planning this a little bit. I'm like, sure. Oh, that that would be good. Yeah. Like, I knew I needed some kind of intro. Right. But I, I had no idea what to do, and I'm like, wait a minute, no, I got this. <laughs> I got and I'm this. I'm just dumb to the whole thing. Just yeah, here I'm I like am. Hey, do, do, do. you're just gonna have to trust me on this. Yeah, like pe- people will like this. Me At least I hope the, they will. Me being the muggle that I am, Matt, I had no clue yep. what mischief you were actually up to uh, until now. Yes, kudos to you for that. Thank you. Also, 26 episodes, you've not once like talked about it or brought it up or mentioned it at all. Yep. You're just waiting for this particular chapter to happen. And you're like, ah, just waiting. <sighs> so good. So it good. was. Um, all right. How's the chapter start out? Um, well, it starts out with, uh, mention of a hinky punk. Yeah. I like that for a creature. I'm super intrigued. I want to know more about it. <laughs> I mean, not only how do you get a one-legged creature, but it lures travelers into bogs mm-hmm. with a lantern. Like, I, I, I'm just trying to picture this. Like, it, the the creature she creates so many times <laughs> try to explain things that we think exist or s- stories that we hear. Like, I, I I've always th- thought about that with with like the the boggarts. Mm-hmm. Um, the, she she said they they hide in dark places like in a closet or under the bed you know right. they are the noises we hear underneath yeah. their bed the boogie at night and yeah she 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 created a creature that lives down there and mm. explains why we never actually see it or anything like that right and i i think that's that's kind of what she's doing here with the hinky punk at like it, it, it's it's that that lost traveler that's trying to find um, the nearest town or a farmhouse or something, and, and oh, there's a little light out there. I should go towards there. And all of a sudden, they're they're in this bog or this you know fog covered area, and and that's when it attacks, and you never hear from these people again. Right. Like mysterious disappearances. It's like blame the hinky punk. Mm-hmm. All right. And I I just love what she does with these. It's like she she builds these creatures to fill these gaps in this mysterious scenario, right? That we we've heard in horror stories for years. Mm-hmm. Not necessary, but just world building. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, I don't know if that's the only time we're going to hear about hinky punks or um or not, but you know, every time we get one of these. Uh, new creatures. I'm, I'm fascinated. Yeah. Um. We found out that Harry, uh, was indeed hearing his mom's voice. It was her dying last words. Uh, how awful to have to like relive that, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, and something that he probably hasn't really had to relive relive up until this point. Mm-hmm. Like it. As if you had asked Harry, do you remember that night? Right. Like, I I think maybe we've gotten reference to some dreams sometimes. I think he's mentioned, like, a green light. Mm-hmm. I think he mentioned once. I think so, yeah. But a flash of green light. Like, yeah, that, that, that's, like, all he can really remember. He, he doesn't remember... Uh, being rescued or being dropped off or right. any a, any of the other events of that night, really. Um, so that th- this is kind of a first after 13 years. Like all of a sudden, yeah, now he's getting a, a, a bigger picture of what happened, right. and he can hear his mom. Like that that's probably the first memory he's really had of hearing his mother. Right, right. Like what when he saw her in the mirror. Uh, the mirror of Mm Erised. I I, I'm pretty sure they didn't talk. Right. I think they were just smiling and waving. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, this is like the first. I mean, unfortunately, that she's kind of screaming. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But like, 
it's his mother's voice regardless right right and then of course she's dead but yeah um yeah it, it's it's got to be a crazy scenario for harry mm-hmm. um lupin's back on the job it's true he's not looking so good no uh, I mean, he wasn't really looking good to begin with, so... No, but I, I, I think they even said, like, he looks even more ragged than ever. Right. The robes are definitely not fitting anywhere close to what they were before. Like, he's sounds like he's lost some weight. Like, he's not doing so good. That worries me, Matt. Yep. Is he going to make it through the year? I, <laughs> I mean, ultimately, I'd like him to last the rest of the, the series, but, I mean, <laughs> I have to be realistic about this here. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what's going on. Um, I don't, you know, he doesn't really talk about where he was, what happened. Uh, he's not at all too pleased that Snape came in and tried to force his students to learn about stuff that they're not ready for. Um, you know, he was kind of shocked that Snape did not listen to the kids when they tried to explain that they weren't in that part of the textbook. <laughs> exactly. It's like, did, well, did you tell him we weren't there yet? <laughs> and like, well, yeah. Of course we told him. And he didn't listen? What? Who is this guy? You know? Yeah. So. But but I do always like how kind of calmly Lupin goes through these things. Yes. Yeah. He's not panicking. Yeah. He, he's, he's very respectful of the other faculty. Yep. Even if, even when they're not doing what, he something he understands or thinks is right necessarily right it's like okay uh, I'll, I'll take care of that later yep. <laughs> we'll go through this now you, you don't have to write, write the report <laughs> which of well, course Hermione to. hates yeah Hermione's already done yeah I was gonna say she's already turned it in like that's, that's how he found <laughs> out about it is he's like what is this paper that you're turning in yeah you know she did um he did, and this is just a weird little anecdote that he, he tossed in there. It doesn't mean much, but um, I don't think it does yet. Uh, he talks about how the Whomping Willow was planted when he was a student at Hogwarts. Yeah, it was. I, I thought that was interesting. That's that's the second reference we've gotten to when the Whomping Willow came. Right. Because I, I, if you remember, I made a big deal about that mm-hmm. uh, when they crashed into it and I believe it was just the line in the movie that Snape gives us that the Whomping Willow has been there since before you were born. Right, right. And I'm like, yes, it's been there all of 12 years. <laughs> so now we kind of got a date. Like, we don't know how old Lupin yes. is, but we at least yeah. have something um, tangible to compare it to. Yeah, uh, he, he's got to be old enough to be a teacher. So you figure he's he's got to be, what, maybe 20 years older than students at least at least i mean in my head like he's probably like in the 60s or 70s okay but i don't i don't i I don't know how he's portrayed you know yeah so very possible i mean anywhere from 20 to 50 years let's say he he sounds like an older gentleman i guess is what i'm saying that's true they do mention his gray hair a lot yeah but i mean that that doesn't mean anything like that's just me uh stereotyping but like in my head i see him being kind of up there in age Sure, sure. But that that at least, you know, because it says the Whomping Willow is planted the same year Lupin started Hogwarts. Right. Now, is that, did they plant the seed that year? Right. I, Was I, it I already a tree I, that they just... Like, I, I, I didn't necessarily take it that way. Mm-mm, like, mm-mm. it was, I, I take it as it was brought onto the grounds right. then. And so it's probably already a couple years old, but... I wouldn't expect it to be too big because, I mean, it's a Whomping Willow who wants to move it once it's gotten to a yeah. certain size. Yeah, he, that Whomping Willow is not letting people uproot it and move yeah. it. Yeah. So, I, I mean, it had to be fairly new. Yeah. Um, but still, g- given that his age, it could be, I I, I mean, who knows? Sure. Like we said, 30, 40, 50 years old. Right. Which is better, much better than and at least 12. 12. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just a fun little, little side note of Hogwarts history. Um, yeah, I always appreciate those little, uh, those little tidbits, you know, um, (sighs) he's talking about the Dementors. Okay. He does. Gives us a lot more background than we've had before. A lot more background. Uh, 
One thing I don't think I've really fully understood until now um, is that they actually feast on humans. Pretty much. That's frightening. Like, I yep. thought they were just there to guard and scare people uh, beyond belief, right? Yeah. Turns out that these things are starving. Yep. And that's probably why they came to the Quidditch pitch. Yep. They were hungry, Matt. Yeah. They essentially, I, th I think you put it like they feed on joy and happiness. Yeah. yeah. Like, they, they don't want to see any of that. They... Um, I mean, he, he told us that they infest the darkest, filthiest places. Mm -hmm. And if it can, a dementor will feed on you long enough to reduce you to something like itself. Right. Now, I did, he didn't say it would turn you into a dementor specifically, but something like itself. Yeah. Basically just like a, a, a shell of your former self. Yeah. It takes out all your joy and happiness and it's just dark, mm -hmm. empty. Uh, see, I, 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 we we have gotten mentions of that before in um, a, a few different instances. Nothing that specific, but I had always pictured it and read it as like more metaphorically speaking, you know. Yeah. But this I, sounds like yeah. they are actually absorbing joy and happiness as a way to feast and uh, replenish um, their own, you know, source of energy within themselves. Yeah, they they can really truly basically destroy and possibly even kill people. Yeah, by sucking all that out of them. Right. So, yeah, like I said, up until now it, it seemed metaphorically speaking, but this is like, yeah, no, these things do some serious damage. These are yeah. bad things to deal with. Th there's there's a reason Dumbledore doesn't want them around. Right. Yeah. Understandably so now. Yeah, it's not just like it'll scare the kids; like it's going to eat the kids. Like, yeah, there will be no yeah. more students at Hogwarts. Um, also, like prisoners at Azkaban only last like a couple weeks. In some cases, yeah. it says, "Yep, that's a that's a that's a pretty gnarly sentence." You know, like if you get sent to Azkaban, like that's that's it; that's the end of the road. Pretty much, yeah. And, and Azkaban is essentially supposed to be a death sentence, yeah. more or less. Which is I mean, crazy. That, that, that's why everybody's afraid of Azkaban. They don't want to be sent to Azkaban. Right. Now I see why Hagrid was so, like, uh, just unsettled by the thought of going there. You know, yep. like, I thought it was like, oh, this is going to be a miserable place. But, you know, you're going to be there for a year or two, and then you'll leave. Like, you'll be fine. Yeah, probably not. If you're no. There, if, if you're there for a year or two, you're probably done. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. That's... That's the last time people see you, except Sirius Black. Yep. Um, Which is an anomaly. Yep. Yeah. But uh, very interesting to learn, like, more about their powers and how they operate. Yeah. I, 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 I like the note that even muggles feel the presence, mm -hmm. but they can't see them. Sure. Which is kind of interesting because... It, it, I guess it kind of is another explanation, like the hinky punk. Mm -hmm. Like I kind of take it as dementors are almost an explanation for like depression. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Like it kind of just can come out of nowhere, and sure, it sucks life out of you. Oh wow! I was thinking more along the lines like when you're like out camping or. You know, just in a darker, kind of unsettling place, and you just get like that that cold feeling. You know, like you sure. think something sure. might be there. Maybe it just it's unsettling. It's you, you can't really put a finger on it, but you just you don't feel good about the situation. I would accept that as well. But depression, wow, that's a that's a whole nother ball game there. <laughs> but yeah, I. I like I, I, I don't know for sure if that's what she was going for, mm -hmm. but just that 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 description, it's like yeah, no, Muggles totally can feel sense. it too, but they don't see them. Yeah, and it just kind of uh, drags you down a little bit, and yep, it's pretty much unexplained. It doesn't really, it's not necessarily triggered by anything. Yeah, but I, I also find it interesting that just off the bat, 
that muggles can't see them. Right. That that's not something we've had with a lot of our our fantastic beasts and mysterious creatures. Right. Um, like it, it, dementors aren't something they need to continuously hide from muggles. Right. Obviously, they don't want them near muggles necessarily, <laughs> but um, it, it, it unlike all the other creatures that we've come across, like like dragons. Right. They 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 have to hide the dragons from the muggles. Yeah. They have to keep them in certain areas. Um, because otherwise they'd see them and things would happen. Right. But, they would reveal the world, but Dementors, on the other hand, they're just by default they can't see them. Right, which is so an interesting wrinkle of how things yep. operate. Yep. <sighs> hmm. Fascinating. I I want to know more about the Dementors. Um, I'm a little afraid to. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but I feel like by the end of this this book at least will have a, a pretty clear understanding of what's going on with these guys. Yeah. Um, on a happier note, uh, a little, just a little tiny thing here I noticed and picked up on. We haven't really gotten to know professor Flitwick much. It's true. Right. The charms he's, teacher. He's been mentioned a number of times. Yeah. But we haven't spent a lot of time with him. No. I look forward to the day, Matt. I look forward to the day. Um, the only reason I bring it up is they were mentioning how he had decorated his classroom with lights um, that were actually pixies or fairies. Uh, I don't remember exactly which, but yeah. One of the two um, in celebration of the Christmas holiday and everything like that. And I just love this professor already. I don't, I don't I hardly know anything about him, but I'm kind of digging what he's going for. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we've seen him in the movies already too. And yeah, he, he's definitely a fun character. Yeah. He just seems um, upbeat and, you know, uplift. He just seems like he's happy to be there. You know, like I, you don't hear the other teachers like decorating their classrooms for definitely like not Snape or anybody. Uh, McGonagall's yeah, it, very businesslike. Like, yeah, Flitwick she's very just, strict. Yeah. Flitwick well, yeah. just seems like he's just happy to be there and around exactly. kids that love magic. Yeah, he, I guess he's the one teacher you don't really get complaints about. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, obviously, you get complaints about Snape. McGonagall, yeah, she can be strict. So, I mean, some students like her, some students don't. Right. Um, I mean, even when you get into, like, Hagrid, like, yeah, people like him, but not everybody in his classes are a little bit questionable <laughs> and that sort of thing. But, yeah, you get, you get Flitwick and no one's really had a problem with the charms class. Right. The history of Hogwarts or, um, yeah. History of Hogwarts. Is that class? I no. I think it's just history. Yeah. Just with history? Professor Bins. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Nobody likes that class. No like... one likes that one. Divination is questionable. Mm -hmm. Um, not everybody's on board there, but yeah, people don't really complain too much about Flitwick and charms. Uh, what's the, um, the, the gardening class. Oh yeah, uh, Professor Sprout and uh, Sprout, yeah. Herbology. Mm -hmm. Herbology. There we go. Like, yep. Uh, uh, Professor that, that, Sprout's that's okay. Another one. Yeah, yeah. Mo most people are okay with. I think. I, I think they just don't like dealing with like the mandrakes and like the stuff that they have to deal with with <laughs> Herbology. You know. Sure. Um, but yeah, like Flitwick, like definitely seems to be like everybody is kind of on board with whatever he's he's up to. I, I I can see him being voted, you know, favorite teacher, or most cheerful, or something like that. Yeah, he's not anybody's like favorite yeah. teacher, probably per se, but <laughs> nobody like doesn't like going to his class. You know, yes, he's just there. I I I look forward to learning more about him. I I hope we do. Um, just like this, this is a little passage about him decorating his class for Christmas. It's like, oh, some yeah. teachers do care. And just to clarify, Professor Flitwick, the charms teacher, had already decorated his classroom with shimmering lights that turned out to be real fluttering fairies. There we go, fairies. Okay. I, I, Pixies was stuck in my head, but I think that's just Lockhart's doing. And yeah, I, I was gonna say that it, it was my guess that it was fairies because yeah, yeah we've had the the pixies. I mean, they, they were the Cornish pixies, so maybe there was a different type of pixie. But yeah, sure. fairies make more sense. Yeah, unless Flitwick just knows how to deal with fairies. Or pixies in general. <laughs> well, you know? he, he probably knows how to deal with them better than Lockhart did. But... <laughs> I think anybody does. <laughs> well, Hermione knew better, so yeah, that's there true. you go. Um, 
So yeah, just a little Professor Flitwick uh, mention. I, I feel like he needs to he needs to get some love here. So uh, let's talk about the Marauders map, Matt. The Marauders map, yes. Wow, what a thing! It is. I and we, we, we've talked about this briefly before. Um, I think it was brought up in some emails. I don't know how much we actually talked about it on the show, but um, in the in in the discussion for like powerful magic objects. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think the Marauders map has to be in that discussion. Yeah. <sighs> Just having a map of like Hogwarts in general is cool. Yep. Especially with secret passages and stuff. Yep. Um, especially one that can um, erase itself so other people can't see it unless you know like the magic words. Yep. Um, all that's really, really fine and dandy. But the true magic happens with the real time updates of people in Hogwarts. Yep. It it tracks the whereabouts of everybody. Yeah. Like, like I, so I mean you you get the idea too if you think about it. This isn't just Hogwarts, the castle. I mean, mm-hmm. the castle we already know has like seven floors. Right, right. Something like that. And so it it's tracking the entire expanse of the castle, every floor and the entire grounds. Right. Because it has uh, the secret passages on it that mm-hmm. lead outside. Right. So it covers a huge area. Mm-hmm. It knows all the people by name, mm-hmm. where they are at all times. Mm-hmm. And then on top of it, it can give additional information yeah. <laughs> to the holder. Like it popped up Harry's name and showed him what to do and what to say. Right. I'm like, what? <laughs> that I mean, I can't think of any technology really that, w- without prompting, it, it is that uh, complete. Right. Like, yeah. sure, we we have like GPS and stuff that Siri, um, and, and yeah, and friend finders and stuff. Like, my, my sister's in town, and I found out that she and her husband have the, the you know the the friend finder or whatever it is on their phones. Mm-hmm. And so they, they can figure out where each of them are at a time. But sure. that's something that you have to set up ahead of time. It's something that you ha- b- both parties have to agree to. Mm-hmm. It, but with this map, it just shows you everything. Right. It knows what you're, what information you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. It, you don't have to request things. I mean, I guess Harry kind of did think or maybe even say, it's like, well, what do I do now? Or where do I go? Right. Kind of thing. And so did the map hear him like and but he wasn't not, specifically asking the map you know yeah and and it's not even like it, that all that was programmed in into the map necessarily mm-hmm. right it, it's just like oh I, I mean maybe it could see okay i guess it could say maybe it was a little bit like it knew it was it, harry was standing near one of the secret passages mm-hmm. so it's like okay i the map am near a secret passage i will show person who's standing here what to do next right but but is it, is it just for the secret passages like what if you go up to the painting um that goes into uh the gryffindor comic? that's true like will it yeah. tell you what the password is at that moment would it give you the password there would it give you the password to dumbledore's office Ooh, it's a lot of power yeah with great power like, comes great it, responsibility, Matt. It, it, th- 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 there's there's questions about just how powerful this map can be. Mm-hmm. I mean, as is, just what we know, I think it's super powerful. Sure. And we know uh, Friend George, uh, which, of course, they're the ones with this map. Because, of yes. course, they are, right? Like, <laughs> who else was going to have this? Um, but we know what they use it for. They use it for the secret passages to um, to get to Hogsmeade. Um so that that's totally like up their alley as to like the extent of what they would ever need it for. Yeah, you know, a little bit of mischief, right? Nothing, nothing bad. But like, what if this fell into the wrong hands? You know, what if this was given or discovered by somebody who was able to activate it to learn more sensitive information that the map might have? Like, that's a dangerous thing at that point. Yeah, it definitely could be. But that, I mean, that that's why. They essentially have a password for it, mm-hmm. which and a way to lock it up when you're done. Scares me, Matt. The fact that this is already built in, 
the JK is setting something up to where somebody's going to use it, whether it's Harry, whether it's somebody else, and they're going to forget to wipe it, and somebody else is going to get their hands on it. I, I just, I see bad things happening with this map, Matt. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I really do. This is, it, it's too powerful. Um, the kids that are using it now are, you know, they're just looking for a little bit of mischief, like I said. Um, you know, they're up to no good, but not not a, a lot of no good. Just, just a little bit of no good. But I don't know. It's Well, I mean, it, it, it's interesting where they found it, too, where Fred and George originally found this. Mm-hmm. It, it, it was in the drawer marked confiscated and highly dangerous. Right. In uh, Filch's office, right? In Filch's office. Right. W- w- which is a little weird to me because Filch being a squib and all, how would he know exactly? Because as far as he knew, it was a piece of paper. Right. Now, maybe in context to who he confiscated it from, he figured it it, it it was dangerous or something, but he probably didn't know the full extent of what it could do, I'm guessing, no. unless he actually caught them in the act using of it. using it. Right. How long has Felch been there? Uh, we we don't know for sure, no. really. Okay. Um, I I, I kind of get he's the same kind of old age. I mean, we we do know that he's old. He's got a limp. He he's not moving so well necessarily. Hmm. Um, I think. Do do we get a reference of him? Was there any reference of him back with like, um, Tom Riddle or anything like that? I don't remember. I do not remember. Like if he's back there and Tom Riddle and Hagrid yeah, say, maybe I'm not sure. Uh, if that sounds kind of familiar, but maybe I'm making stuff up there. Yeah, I'll have to look into that a little yeah. bit. But um, I guess my question with that is, Matt, uh, we later find out that Sirius Black attended Hogwarts. Yes, as a kid. Yes. Um, sounds like. Him and his friends were troublemakers. Before we get into too much of that, no, no, no. I'm going back to the map here. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm not going to go into that whole that whole drama filled thing. Okay. Okay. I wonder if Sirius Black had access to that map at one point with the secret passages, because. Now, I don't have an explanation as to how he would have got out of Azkaban. I don't know any of that. But as far as him possibly being in Hogwarts, somebody that would know secret passages in and out of Hogwarts would definitely have easier access to get into the school. Sure. Just thinking out loud here, Matt. Just thinking out loud. Yep. I'm just, you know, spitballing here because, like, you know, Harry even thought about with this map, uh, the Weasley, Mr. Weasley told him, you know, uh, it's hard to trust anything that thinks for itself if you don't know, if you can't see where its brain is located. Uh, This map definitely has some, uh, some thinking qualities to it of its own. How much can the map be trusted by itself? How much can it be trusted when it's in the hands of somebody using it for no good? I don't know. But there's a lot to it. But it's awesome. It's an awesome thing. So to clear this up a little bit, um, because I don't think it's going to ruin anything. Uh, Filch was born in 1956. Okay. And started working as a caretaker in 1973. 1973, huh? Yes. I don't know how that <laughs> helps or hurts my theories here, Matt. But um, Yeah, so uh, like in the books right now, we are roughly early to mid-90s. Okay. So, so 20 call, call it tw- yeah, 20 years before-ish. Oh, okay. 
is, is when he started. He, he's been working there for about 20 years. Okay, and Harry's 13, so seven years removed. I don't know how old his parents <laughs> would have been when they were at Hogwarts. It's possible. Throw that in the possible. It's possible. Yeah. It's plausible right. at this point without knowing specific dates of things. All right. Okay. What else do you want uh, to talk about with this map? Yeah. The map will lead us into our muggle poll for the week. All right. Um, I simply wanted to know, without giving into uh, any details or comments as why necessarily, I wanted to know, based on their names, since we the, the, these characters seem to be people of some sort or something mm -hmm. that uh, created this map, Messrs. Mooney, Wormtail, Padfoot, and Prongs, which would you be? They're, they're, they're rather unique names. I, I kind of like are. them. Yeah. Um... They, 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 it, it, it's kind of weird because they kind of have a flow to them. Mm -hmm. Like it, it works as like a um, – what, what do they actually call the map? Let me think. I didn't write that down, but I can uh, pull it up here. It's Messrs. Mooney, Wormtail, Padfoot, and Prongs, purveyors of aids to magical mischief makers and are proud to present the Marauder's map. Yeah. Like it, it just it flows so nicely. It it it's it's a little too much for a business card, but it sounds great. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Written on a map, I could I could totally see it. Yeah. Um. As far as this poll goes, I have a feeling that most people that voted on it know more about these characters than I do. It's possible. Now, I know you told the people to to vote based on just their names alone. Um, yeah. but that's hard. That's hard to, I know to, to put away pre-existing knowledge of things, uh, for the sake of going in, uh, with a blank slate like I have. Uh, so I don't know how surprising, um, the results are. I, I can't tell you one way or the other. Um, Wormtail definitely is the most interesting to me because it's the only one that doesn't really sound like it could be a name. Um, maybe these are all nicknames, I'm, I'm thinking. Um, but it's just, that one stuck out the most. Um, okay. would I have picked it? I, I don't, I don't know. I, it's hard to say, Matt. It's really hard to say. You know? Okay. It, 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 if we do assume that they're nicknames, mm -hmm. I, I, I guess, which one would you, if you had to pick one of these four nicknames, you're, you and three are your friends. Mm -hmm. Which one would you want to be? Hmm. Which one would you want people calling you? Hmm. Maybe Padfoot does sound the best then. Prongs? Maybe? Padfoot seems like the la the least offensive of all of them. <laughs> least offensive. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Personally, I went with prongs. Okay. All right. Well, what would the people say? Uh, the people, I guess, went with you. Mm -hmm. 48% actually with Padfoot. Hmm. Uh, we had 28% with Mooney. 20% um, tw uh, with prongs and just 4% with Wormtail. Okay. Is there specific order to these? What do you mean? Like the way they're listed and and said. Okay, now okay, now I'm thinking here. Go for it. Uh, if we're to assume that these are nicknames, because I don't think these are anybody's last names or first names, we're to assume they're nicknames or like club names, right? If they've whatever these four people are that came up with this map, that created this map, designed this map, shared this map, whatever. <sighs> The one that I, I have to start with would be Wormtail, right? Okay. Wormtail kind of sounds uh, Slytherin-ish. <laughs> well, wouldn't it just be like Snake? Yeah, or but that's too obvious, right? But but I mean, I mean it, yeah, yeah, it's a little obvious, but th that's always been a good nickname. It's like in, in a in a you think like a bite 
your gang or something, there's always someone named Snake. Yeah. But again, too obvious. Right? So then you think Padfoot, okay? Padfoot, Padfoot. What could that mean? Padfoot. So then I think of the feet, the paws of a mammal like Creature Man. Okay. And they have pads on them. Like, if you look like on, on the bottom of like your cat's foot or your dog's foot. I don't have cats. I sure. don't have dogs. You've touched a cat before. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> They have, like, pads on their feet, right? Easy to walk on. I guess. I, 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 honestly, I've never examined that examined them that closely, but, yeah, I guess there are kind of pad of some sort. Sure. Yeah, it's not all fur. Right. A lion would have padded feet. Uh, oh, sorry, a what? A lion. Oh, okay, a lion. Mm-hmm. Now, the other two I'm, I'm a little stuck on here. The prongs... And Mooney. Okay. I don't, I don't know how I connect those to Hufflepuff and the house of which shall not be named. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know how to connect those yet. But when I think of four, like each time we've had four of something, it, it's kind of been in reference to the four houses. It's true. And I don't know if this is the case here or not. But... If everybody else knows the secret that I don't know yet, Padfoot would definitely get the most votes because everybody wants to be Gryffindor. I think we've seen that before. So, again, I don't know. I, I don't know where I'm going with all of this, but I have a feeling these might come down to uh, students at Hogwarts at one point who came up with nicknames so they wouldn't be discovered as to their real names and they each represented a house of Hogwarts um, to make up this group of troublemakers that made maps of the school and underground tunnels and I don't know there's a whole thing going on in the underground here and I haven't, I haven't connected all the dots Matt but these nicknames these nicknames. It's definitely a solid theory, I think. Especially because you wrote no comments. Like, you were actively trying to keep people from commenting on this. Yeah. Most weeks, you're not you're not too concerned about that kind of stuff. Yeah. But there's some secrets in these names, Matt. There's secrets. And I'm going to find out. Okay. All you padfoots out there, I'm on to you. All right, so moving along. <laughs> uh, Harry moves into a tunnel. Yeah. I believe that's where we're at? Sure, yeah. My thought here, mm -hmm. he talks about going through these tunnels mm -hmm. forever. Yeah. It takes forever to get through these tunnels, and they're, they're pretty good-sized tunnels. He doesn't have to, like, duck down too much. He's not crawling through these tunnels. Right. He, he, he's walking, he's running, and then he gets to the staircase, mm -hmm. and he's climbing the staircase forever and ever. Yeah. Like, who built these things? <laughs> like, seriously, like, it, you, you would almost think if it was done magically that they might look a little bit nicer. Sure. And so if it's not done magically, someone took an awful lot of time to build these tunnels and this staircase and... This is just one of the tunnels right. out of the castle. Like, Can't ooh. they have some like torches down there that are burning and yeah. totally, you know? Like And how long did it take to do this? And and yeah, it's just wow. Yeah. Someone was dedicated. Also, does Dumbledore know about these? It makes you wonder. I mean, he knows a lot, even though he, when he does know a lot. Sometimes he plays it off like he doesn't know much. Uh, I, I, I mean, you think back to when they were searching for the Chamber of Secrets, though. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe it was, uh, well, in the movie it was McGonagall. In the book, I believe it was Bins, told us that 
the school has been searched many times for the Chamber of Secrets. Right. And they never found anything. Yeah. But at the same time, Dumbledore always seems to know a little bit more. He knew about the mirror, mirror of Erised. He knew where to move it. Mm-hmm. He, he knew everything to know. Uh, I mean, he didn't necessarily know where the chamber was or if he, well, I mean, he was mysteriously absent too. Right. When they actually found the chamber. And like Fox knew exactly where to go. Like, yep, Fox knew where it was. But I mean, I I can attribute that to magic, like being called to Harry wherever he was at the time. Sure. Um, not necessarily knowing exactly where he was going. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, th- th- there's just little things here and there. It's like, yeah, Dumbledore does know a lot, and usually only will like admit to it if he really needs to. Right. It kind of feels like he just he's he's satisfied just letting people kind of figure out things on their own. Yeah, especially when it comes and, to Harry. Yeah, when it comes to Harry, and I mean even some of the other students, like let kids be kids. Like if he knew about these passages, he probably knew that Fred and George had been using them. Yeah, even if Filch didn't know, and he didn't tell Filch about them. Right. Like they said, Filch knew about what, what there are seven tunnels, and Filch knew about four of them. And one was caved in and that sort of thing. <laughs> and, I want to know how Felch find out about him. <laughs> well, he, he's been run around the school for, for 20 years. Yeah, that's true. That's, that, true. that's been his job is to yeah. prowl the hallways for 20 years. Yeah. Speaking of which, when they were, when Harry was looking at the map and he saw Miss Norris on the map, yep. like it indicated that like she stopped to sniff something on the ground. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oh, I love that. That was good. <laughs> it's a very good map. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting stuff. Yep. What does Dumbledore know? It's a big mystery. Hmm. That it is, Matt. That it is. I'm sure we'll find out one of these days. <laughs> um... So Harry makes his way to Hogsmeade. He does. He gets to hang out with his friends. Um, I like how, like, they weren't necessarily surprised that this map existed. Ron was super surprised that Harry got the map from friend George before he did. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) He was, like, offended. It's like, why didn't they give it to me? Uh, Their brother... Um, uh, little brother syndrome. Yeah. Hermione, of course, is, is questioning um, using it. You know, she's like, well, you don't have a written pass to be here at Hogsmeade. Like, you're going to get in trouble. And, yep. you know, like running down the list of everything that could go bad while they're here. And it's like, Hermione, just breathe, relax. You know, like, you already know that when Harry and Ron get together... There's going to be mischief to be had, so let's just, you know, just go along with it at this point, you know? I, I, go, going back a little bit, I, I did like that there was another reference. Harry, Harry brought up uh, Mr. Weasley's warning mm-hmm. that we got in the last book, too, um, about not trusting anything where you, if you can't see yep. where it keeps its brain. Mm-hmm. Like, I, and it, it was kind of kind of amazing that, like, Harry thought about that and then right. got past it so quickly. <laughs> like wait no no if, if you're gonna take the time to think about that you should think about that some more right well i mean they got into a car and flew to hogwarts so he's not opposed to to doing crazy things I, I, like i think it would have been more li- more likely if ron was there with him that's right but he wanted him to, into it he knew his friends were there though you know yeah i, I he he wanted to get to hogs meet bad yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. Like, he was definitely going to meet up with it. Like, he wasn't going to to use that map to just go by himself and be by himself. Like, he knew at the end of the journey, he was going to be reunited with Hermione and Ron, and that was the reward that was worth the risk to him. Sure. Um, Hearing more about uh, Hogsmeade makes me want butterbeer. Absolutely. Every time. Every time, Matt. Yep. Yep. Makes me thirsty. Harry gets his first butterbeer, though. Yep, yep. Enjoyed it, as he should. Yep. 
Uh, we got another mention of the Shrieking Shack. It's true. Still don't know what that is, Matt, but I want to check it out. Uh, maybe someday. Yeah, maybe someday. Uh, we learned that the uh, the teachers teachers like to party. They do. I mean, they've earned it. It's yeah. They it's don't been get a long a lot of year time so far. <laughs> um, yeah, they're going on vacation for a couple of weeks as well, so they might as well throw back a few in uh, the old was it three brooms, right? Three room six, yep. Three room six, that's right, yeah. Yep. Um, so I, th- I thought this was going to be, like, a, an interesting, like, just, you know, bar scene. You know, of the teachers kicking back, telling some old war stories, and talking Throwing about... darts. Yeah, talking about the year as it's been so far, probably talking about how much they all hate Snape. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Doing, you know, loosening up the tie a bit, doing teacher outside of school activities. Sure. Did not expect it to go the route that it did. Yep. Especially because everything was so... <sighs> Things were going good in this chapter, right? Yep. <laughs> we were we were having a lot of positivity going on. Um, Harry's getting this really cool magical map. Uh, he's reunited with his friends. He's at a place where he's not supposed to be, but he's still enjoying himself. Everything is good. And then <sighs> it got really serious, really fast too quickly, Matt. I was not prepared for it. And I don't want to sit here and try to break everything down because I need to hear you kind of explain everything that we learned here, because I am still processing everything. I have a few notes, but, at some point, I forgot to take notes because I was just trying to concentrate on the plot lines that were happening and being drawn and how were they connecting to different people and different things. And it, uh, my, my, my map on the wall with red strings going left and right and up and down got all twisted up into just a ball of yarn. Uh, sure. I'm a mess. So what we know right now, mm-hmm. um, I, I thought it was an interesting way to intro into it that we we, we bring Madame Rose Murda into it. Mm-hmm. And the, she first mentions that she remembers Sirius Black when right. he was younger. Right. At Hogwarts. And at Hogwarts. And she thought of him as a good kid. Yeah. Like she, she, she w- did not expect this at all, and so then we get into talk about Sirius Black and his background with other characters that we know, right? Such as James Potter. Well, I'm gonna stop you right there. Yes, because so she's explaining Sirius Black previously at Hogwarts. None of this is a surprise to me. I'm like, oh, of course he was at Hogwarts. Everybody's at Hogwarts, right? Um. How he's a good kid. Everybody liked him. I'm like, okay, I've heard this story before, <laughs> you know. And then they're talking yep. about friend, uh, a best friend of his that he liked to get in mischief with, and was always like they were pretty much inseparable. Yep. First name that came to mind, Matt. What Tom was that? Riddle. <laughs> I'm like, I figured it out. I'm 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 so good at this. I'm so good. I got this figured out. Of course, he was friends with Tom Riddle. Tom Riddle was a good kid. He, you know, everybody kind of liked him. Uh, yep. Nobody suspected yep. he would he would go that way, even though he was Slytherin. But you know, uh, gotta be cautious about those kids. But you know, good kid gone bad. Tom Riddle, got yeah. It. So I was Sears like, Black. good kid gone bad. Right, friends with Tom Riddle. It it made sense. I was like, holy cow! I have solved it. I am. I'm. I don't even need to finish the rest of this book. Done. Wrap it up. Bow tie it. I got this. Yep. No, I was so wrong. Yeah. 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 He was best friends with James Potter. <sighs> who, if you don't remember, I mean, the Potter name is, it, it should, should ring some bells, obviously, <laughs> but James Potter specifically mm-hmm. is Harry's father. <sighs> this was, this was very upsetting for me, Matt. Yeah. Yeah. One, I don't, I don't like that connection at all. Two, um, I've had an ongoing theory that they were one and the same. 
Yep. <laughs> That's not kinda true. Sh- kind of shattered that one. Like 99% sure that's that's a false theory at this point. But we did learn a few more things. Mm-hmm. Black wasn't just best friends with him at school. Right. This continued past school. Mm-hmm. So much that Sirius Black was James Potter's best man at his wedding. Yeah. And even once past the marriage, they had little Harry. Mm-hmm. He was named Godfather. Yes, he was. So, you, you, I mean, you, you had your theory that this was his father? Yeah. Not quite, but was his godfather. That's uh, it's too much. I, I... It's so much, so much just to unpack there without knowing any details. Like, I... Yeah, that's uh, it's it's truly upsetting, you know. Yeah, that I honestly, yeah, that is probably one of the biggest reveals in the series. Yeah, it it, it is just huge. No one, no one saw that coming. Right. So when uh the Dursleys saw that this man was wanted by the police. Yep. They obviously would have known who he was. You would think, right? Uh, I mean, how much did they disassociate themselves with the Potters? Very, very much. Okay. Yeah, I I would go as far to say that they may not have been at the wedding. Okay. Um... I think the title of Godfather probably wasn't mentioned to them, or if it was, they didn't care. Mm-hmm. Um, they they really tried to put a lot of distance in okay. between themselves and the Potters. Like, yeah, they they knew that um, Lily had married James, and that the last name was Potter. Right. But you you think about it back in the first book, um, Uncle. Vernon, he's out and about at his job, and he he thinks he hears people marry uh, mention the name Harry, mm-hmm. and he has to think. It's like, wait, was that the kid's name? Right. Like, like they they didn't really stay in contact. They didn't want to be in contact with them at all. That's true. Okay. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, I I I would I mean, on top of that, all I think. The name Sirius Black, it's it, it's it's not Potter related. I mean, right. it, it was a friend from school. Sure. So that I mean, while they they remember the name James Potter, they're not necessarily going to remember anybody else from that world if they ever met them. Right, right, right. Hmm, that's fair. So, well, you would think in normal circumstances, yeah, you might have met the best man at your sister's wedding. I, I, being the Dursleys being the Dursleys, I wouldn't be so sure. Right. Okay. Well, I still, I still don't like all those connections. I don't like Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Continue. So, yeah. There's more to break down. <laughs> yes. Then um, we, we get another little visit from uh, Professor Flitwick. Again, he, mm-hmm. he is here in this party, right? Yes. And I think he's here for one specific reason. To explain the Fidelius charm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that we learn a lot about. And so it all, all started because... Through Dumbledore's intel, he the, the Potters knew that Voldemort was looking for them. Right. And he suggested that they use this charm. And a, as it's explained, it's it's basically a magical way to keep a secret. Mm-hmm. Which I think is, is fantastic that it's even a thing. <laughs> right, right. Um, that you can magically seal a secret with a secret keeper. 
And the only way it comes out is if they choose to reveal it. Right. Right. And I, I just love the description of like Voldemort could have searched the town for years. And even if he was p- pressing his face up against their window, he wouldn't see him. Right. Because it, it, it just was hidden from everybody except the secret keeper. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, they had decided to use Sirius Black, their best, uh, James Potter's best friend, his best man, Harry's godfather. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a great choice. Yeah, absolutely. Who else would you, you wouldn't trust any anybody else more than that person. And so they chose him to mm-hmm. keep their secret about where they were. Mm-hmm. They performed charm. And yeah, it's seemed to be going well. Right. Now, Dumbledore offered to be the secret keeper. It's true. It's true. Uh, D- Dumbledore had his doubts about really keeping it with anybody else, I think. Right. But... um. In this case, in particular, it seemed maybe he had his doubts about Sirius Black. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Once, once again, one of these situations where does Dumbledore know, know something we don't? <laughs> exactly. Like, come on, share with the class. Yeah. Um. So, like, for whatever reason, though, he wasn't able to convince them that he should be their secret keeper. Right. Well, I mean, how could you, you know, like this is a man that they trust, you know, with everything else. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, at, at this point, I, I, James has grown up with this kid. And yeah, while he's known Dumbledore as professor, as headmaster, mm-hmm. I, I think he would have been headmaster while he was in school. I, mean, eh, I don't know exactly how that lines up. <laughs> but um, in any case, he, he would have at least been a professor at the school. Right. Yeah. Um, the entire time, and so he he would know Dumbledore quite well, but he he didn't spend all his free time hanging out with him. He 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 didn't get into mischief with Dumbledore. He did all that with Sirius Black. Yeah, and unless Dumbledore they, came to him with like evidence of something, like he's not going to yeah. just you know throw away that entire friendship that he has with this person based on a bad feeling. Yeah, they, like they, 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 I'm sure they had already shared many many secrets. Yeah. And James felt that he could trust Sirius. Yeah. And so why not trust him with the most important secret that I only want to tell one person ever? Mm-hmm. It makes sense. Sure. Except uh, they told their secret to a traitor. A turncoat, yep. if you will. <laughs> As Haggard puts it, I believe. Yes. yes a turncoat. <laughs> Oh, God, this is just getting bad. This is just getting going from bad to worse, Matt. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, that, then Hagrid kind of takes over. It's like, oh, now it all makes sense. It's like because he, he back in the day when he he went to pick up Harry, like Dumbledore, I guess, sent him to pick up Harry. It, it, like th- this is the first thing we find out in chapter one of book one. Mm-hmm. Like we, we hear about Hagrid bringing Harry to Dumbledore. Right. Um, and I, this is where I mentioned to you, like, this is where we've heard of series before. Mm -hmm. It's, it's Hagrid borrowed his motorcycle. Right. And now we kind of get the other side of the story, or Mm -hmm. at least from Hagrid's point of view where, yeah, Sirius was there and he thought it was kind of weird, but didn't really think much of it at the time. And right. Yeah, okay. Took Sirius's bike. He offered him, said he wouldn't need it anymore. Right. Well, first, he was trying to get Hagrid to leave Harry with him. It's true. And it's he's true. like, yeah, I know you're the godfather. I know I should probably feel okay doing that. But my man Dumbledore, like, yeah. specifically told me to bring him to him and nobody else. Hagrid has been Dumbledore's man through and through, yeah. time and again. Every time, like he's been sent to run errands for him so many times, right. and Hagrid being the the loyal friend that he is, and feeling so like almost indebted to Dumbledore mm-hmm. over all these years, kind of like he he doesn't want to break that trust. Yeah, and he's like, I, I 
I know you. I believe I can trust you, Sirius. But Dumbledore trumps all that. Right. If it, anybody else had sent him on that mission, like he yeah. probably would have handed him over to Sirius. Yeah. Yeah. But because it was Dumbledore, he's like, can't. I can't do it. Thankfully. Yeah. And I, I, mean, I kind of think Dumbledore knows that, too. Right. It, it, it's one of those things. It's like. Dumbledore knows. Oh, like Dumbledore didn't want to necessarily go there himself, mm-hmm. but he knew he could trust Hagrid to get the job done. Right. Like I, I, I know I've said that before. He can yep. trust Hagrid <laughs> to get the job done. Yep. And every time he comes through, and so that's exactly why he did it that way. <sighs> so now we have Hagrid's version of it. We're, we're... The best part about like this whole thing is just. Everybody is contributing like their own piece of the story. Yep. To like make this bigger picture of everything that happened and and how bad it really got. Um, I I found that just absolutely fascinating. I, I love that part of it. Um, yeah. But it was a lot to keep up with. Like at, at this point, like my head spinning. This is it's just just a mess. You know, top to bottom of. Who's who and who's friends with what and what happened exactly and why is somebody, you know, being a traitor to other people that they were best friends with? Like, a lot going on. And then you throw in kind of like the finale of how Sirius Black just uh, ended up where he was, Azkaban. Yep. With this whole thing with uh, this Peter Pettigrew. Yeah. So what happened there? I uh, it started to get really fuzzy for me. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so uh, I I had the note here that I think of Peter Pettigrew the way he's described here is a mix of Neville Longbottom mm-hmm. and Colin Creevy. Okay, because. Like Neville, it, it, it has always kind of been the fourth person in their group. Yeah. Whenever there's a fourth, it's it, it's it's Neville. Mm-hmm. But Colin Creevy has kind of been the the they actually use the term uh, that Pettigrew hero worshipped Black and Potter. Right. And so that 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 kind of gets me to Colin Creevy. It's like he's always there. He he thinks Harry's so great, and mm-hmm. and he, he he wants to do that. So you you put that that attitude into Neville. Uh-huh. And I think you get Peter Pettigrew. Yeah. I think Neville like is kind of afraid of the trio. Like Yeah. Yeah, like like we <laughs> Bad say, things he, happen to Neville when he's yeah, around he, the trio. He, he's always just wrong place wrong time. <laughs> he he doesn't like worship or idolize them at all. He's just like, "Oh god. Exactly. If I have to and, be with you guys, I guess I will, but I'm bracing myself <laughs> for what's going to happen." And that, that's exactly why I need to mix him with Colin mm-hmm. Creevy. Like yep. Co- Colin is, is actually a, a year younger than than these other guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas Neville's in the same year and uh Pettigrew, I believe is in the same year as Black and Potter. Right. Um and but never quite in their league talent-wise. Mm-hmm. I w- I was often sharp with him. You can imagine how how I regret that now. Um, and so that, that, that instantly makes me think of Neville. You're right. But like he, he, he's not in their league talent wise. He yeah. always has trouble in school. Um, he, I mean, especially Snape, you know, picks on him mercilessly. Right. Right. Like we've been talking about this. And so it, it, it you get that in your head and you get this Pettigrew kid, mm-hmm. that, that fat little boy who's always taking around them. Yep. <laughs> like it's just, he, he's, he's that kid. Yeah. And so Pettigrew is there and he, he, he wants to just always hanging around and kind of essentially found himself in the wrong place, the wrong time, Mm -hmm. like trying to do the right thing. It's almost like when, uh, they were going to, uh, the the find the sorcerer's stone. The trio was sneaking out. Yeah, and they had to petrify Neville. Right. <laughs> it, it, it's almost that situation where where he's there. He's he's going to do the right thing. Uh, Petter Pet- cornered Black, and and then tried to basically get get himself to turn him in 
it's like how could you do that mm-hmm. and then Sirius well like said what killed 13 people with one curse yeah yeah in quite of uh an act of destruction it sounded like yeah blew a giant hole in the ground yeah <laughs> is it, yeah it, it's just crazy stuff going on right big mess to clean up for sure mm-hmm which is why he was apprehended by about 20 other wizards. And, you know, it wasn't um, a silent uh, 13 kill. It was, I'm going out in, in a, a blaze of glory here. Yep. <sighs> Pettigrew died. Um, he got the, 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 what, the Merlin Award or whatever it was called. Uh yeah, the Order of Merlin first class. Yeah, I'm guessing which, that that's like a like a gold star, probably Purple Heart. It, yeah, something something along those lines. It, this is actually, I believe, an award that Dumbledore has. Oh, like that that, that that's that's one of the titles that, uh, I, like like is on his like chocolate frog card and stuff. Okay, I I believe Dumbledore has done something to earn this as well. Okay, but Peter Pettigrew died, right? Uh yeah okay yeah so it can be given post uh post human I can't even say that word it's too late <laughs> after death yes um, yes hmm I want to know more about this Peter guy I want to know yeah. what made him want to be a hero that day. That's all we got. Yeah. That was the end of the chapter. Um, Pretty close, yeah. Um, I, I did like the the term uh, trained hit wizards. Yes. <laughs> I I mean, I, I obviously trying to go after, like, hit men. Yeah. That we have in the muggle world. Mm-hmm. But, they have, of course, they have to be hit wizards. Sure. Um, and I... I did like um, Fudge, I believe it was mm-hmm. the, uh, the 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 Minister of Magic. He said he visited Black in Azkaban, right? And he was and he was shocked at how normal Black seemed. Yeah, <laughs> he was joyful. He was he was not getting broken down at all. Uh, he said it was unnerving. You'd have thought he was merely bored. Yeah. He asked if he was done with his paper yet so he could read it. <laughs> yep. Like, yep. How is he avoiding the Dementors and, and what they do to people, you know? Yeah. Cause, I mean, they, they mentioned that earlier when they were talking, when Lupin was talking about de- the Dementors. It's like, mm. yeah, um, uh, after after a while, they're supposed to suck the the magical powers from a wizard. Right. Like, that. The, so they're just going to be turned into essentially normal people and then just kind of fade off from there. Sure. But yeah, not, none of that. So that makes it even stranger. How is black still there? Right. And we know there's spells that y- you can use to defend yourself from them, uh, to kind of keep them at bay. But Lupin pointed out that like that only works, you know, with a few of them, like not on a, on a large scale of them. Although we did see, Dumbledore come in and and yeah and and at least fend them off temporarily like but that's that's Dumbledore too but at the same time like Sirius Black like sure he could know all that but I'm pretty sure he wouldn't be allowed to have his wand while he's sitting in a prison cell yeah they're not they they don't have their wands in Azkaban so I don't know if he could do spells without the wand how effective they are so like what is he doing to be able to resist what the Dementors are, you know, their only existence in life is, and I, I don't, I, I don't know how that's possible. Yeah. It's a big mystery. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I do like, the, at the end, the very end of the chapter, um, it's, at first, it's Harry, Ron, and Hermione at this table. When the teachers come in, Harry knows that he's not supposed to be there, so he ducks underneath the table, and he's, Yep, listening to all this, but Ron and Hermione essentially are just sitting there listening to these teachers go on and tell this crazy story. 
Yeah. You know, like they're 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 it's okay for them to be there. They are where they're supposed to be. Um they don't need to be hiding and the teachers like are are going into the story as if like nobody else is around that could possibly hear what's going on. You know. Yeah, it's it, like it's a little odd for sure. I, I also found it odd, though, that there didn't necessarily seem to be either a lot of other people or at least a lot of other students. Right. There. Yeah. Like the, I think the teachers kind of thought like they invited the, the, the barkeeper to sit down and drink with them. <laughs> yeah. If it was busy, the barkeeper is not going to be sitting yeah. down, taking one in. Um, but like at the same time. If there were two kids that you would definitely not want to tell the story around, <laughs> it was Ron and Hermione, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, her, Hermione definitely right off the bat made sure they were hidden right, as much as she could. Sure. But still, yeah, it, it does seem a little odd. It seems a little out in the open. <laughs> but by the end, they're all underneath the table with Harry. Like, <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is bad. This is real bad. Um, fascinating. Fascinating bar talk. Yeah. A lot. I, uh, hmm. There's a lot of things going on here, Matt. I don't I don't know how this gets resolved. I really don't. It will. I'm sure it will. I know it will. I'm just Yep. That's we're not going fast enough, you. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we have any emails this week? We do. All we right. do have a, a couple of emails. All right. Let's get to emails. Uh, first email is from our friend Brent. Oh, hi, Brent. Yeah. On the podcast a couple of weeks ago over there, the Pewtercast. Mm-hmm. Um, it says, hey, guys, so I meant to send an email last week, but honestly forgotten the hustle and bustle. And I almost forgot this week, but this this little quiet moment I have with the kids are napping and I should be wrapping presents or cleaning the house or something. I wanted to send this out. <laughs> Uh, he he has a nice English lesson here for us, but I'm, I'm going to skip over most of it because he, the email is quite long. Okay. Um, but essentially he gives us a, a good explanation of why it's Bogart and not Bogart. Okay. Um, and I guess I will agree. You're correct. I, it, all that English pronunciation stuff has never been my forte at all. Um, and I can agree with you. Yes, it's Boggart. Um, I, I, I still will trip up from time to time, but, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair enough. So thank you for that. Um, okay. Now that that's out of the way, allow me a moment to jump backwards a week and address some things I heard there. First, in reference to your conversation about how the students get from the train in Hogsmeade to the castle, particularly the first year students on the boat over the water, seeing the castle as they approach. You guys have said a couple of times now that if Disney had gotten hold of it, then it would be a ride. Well, I'd, I'd just like to point out that Disney did, in fact, get a hold of it in 1971 when Walt Disney World Florida opened. Uh, just in case you haven't been there, let me explain. When you park your car for the Magic Kingdom, you park at a place called the Ticket and Transportation Center. From there, you can either choose to take the monorail around or a large ferry boat across the Seven Seas Lagoon. Off in the distance, you see Cinderella's castle prominently displayed in the background, beckoning you forth. And of course, as the ferry boat approaches, the larger the castle becomes until you find yourself at the entrance to the park. Dare I say, it is nothing less than magical. Hmm. So, I have been there once. Okay. I don't remember taking a ferry across, though, so I must have gone the other way. Okay. Um... So I, that that is kind of cool because yeah, I mean that that's exactly what I'm saying. It, it, like that would be the moment. Um, sure. Yeah. And it's true. I mean, they do have a castle, so huh. it's it's very possible. Yeah, I've never been there, so I, I I have no idea. But that sounds really awesome. Yeah. So now, if we ever get you down there, um, <laughs> I mean, to see Harry Potter World, obviously, we right. might just have to stop by Disney as well. I mean, if we're down there, we might yeah, as well, right? You know. <laughs> You know. uh, second, your continued disparaging of the Slytherin house, stating <laughs> how all Slytherins are bad and evil is greatly troubling to me. As a Slytherin myself, I can say that they are not all bad, or nor are we all bullies. Slytherins are better. Uh, Slytherins are better than everyone else, but that's only because we are the best house. 
Mm. much in the same way that Kentucky is the best college basketball team and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are the best. <clears throat> okay, I'll stop. <laughs> but you get where I'm going with that. Now, all of that said, while Slytherins are not all bad, Ravenclaws are all nerds, every single one of them. It's okay if you think they don't exist because they're pretty much invisible anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so sure I would agree with that, Brent. I mean, I, I personally I prefer the term geek over nerd, but... uh. Yeah, we're here. We exist. <laughs> and finally, on a show level, uh, one of the things I am enjoying most are Josh's theories on what's happening. It's quite amusing to hear how far away he is from on some of his theories and just how close he is to the truth, and yet so far at the same time, mm. on other theories. It reminds me of growing up when whenever you try to guess my Christmas presents or something else, my dad would simply look at me and say, you're a good guesser. So in that spirit, None has taken me more than the Sirius is Harry's father slash Darth Vader theory. <laughs> it, it, it's everything and nothing all at once. And Josh is truly a good guesser. Oh, goodness. <laughs> all right, guys, that's it for now. Oh, yeah, the bonus content episode we did receive some pretty good feedback. Thanks again for doing it. It was fun. Hopefully, we can work together again in the future. Absolutely. Our pleasure. Yeah. <sighs> So, Matt, Matt, this weekend I saw Star Wars Rogue One. Yeah. Never never before have I wanted my Darth Vader theory to be accurate. <laughs> More so than after seeing that film. But Sure. Oh, well. Well, we have one more email. Okay. From the one and only Atari Alex. Hi, Alex. Dear Messrs. Josh and Matt... Happy Christmas. I hope you baked many biscuits and drank loads of tea, and I hope your boxing day has been smashing. Enough with the Britishisms. Let's get down to business. <laughs> First, I need to feel the need to point out a few things you got wrong in the previous episode. Surprise, surprise. This is Last the time... corrections part of the podcast. <laughs> Josh referred to the creatures Hagrid taught, uh, taught us about as flubber worms rather than flobber worms, mm. which conjured up an image of worms made of dancing green slime. Right? That's the <laughs> image in my head. Like, honestly, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> uh, well, humorous, it is still an incorrect spelling. Um, so, yeah, it, it's flobber worms with an O, not flubber worms with a U. Okay. Well, so. also, to my defense, Yep. I'm not actually reading them. I'm listening yep. to them being read. You're so... getting it from Bell. Yep. Mm. So, well, you you can let her know. Translation issues, you know. <laughs> uh, you also talked about whether or not there is a curfew at Hogwarts. Somehow forgetting that in the Philosopher's Stone, <clears throat> <laughs> Harry. I, I never read that book. I'm sorry. <laughs> Harry, Hermione, Neville, and Draco all got detention for being out of bed. Yeah, but. I, I, I'm not 100% now because he, he's questioning it and I haven't listened to the episode again yet, but I thought we did settle on there was a curfew. Maybe. I Didn't don't know. We? Well, I kind of... Because like we said, it, like they always had to sneak out of bed. They had sure. to use the, the invisibility cloak to get places. Like They couldn't just walk around the hallways at night. I guess I was just more looking for like the more detailed version of what their curfew would look like, you know? Sure. Like, do you have to be in bed and you can't leave the common, you know, you can't leave your house until, you know, this time. Can you get up? Can you go get a snack from the kitchen if you're hungry in the middle of the night? Like, yeah, you know. Fair enough. I want to know the specifics. Also, right. those kids get in trouble and lose points for anything these days. Like, I don't trust any sort of, like, you know, uh, punishment that they receive as being, like, a hard set rule that's in place. That's true. They, they make <laughs> punishments on the spot. Yeah. Uh, this week's chapters were brilliant. There was mystery, suspense, action, and tragedy. And it left on such a cliffhanger that even I had to re read the next few sentences out of curiosity before I forced myself to put the book away. I do, however, have a few minor complaints. First, Dumbledore has students sleep in the Great Hall, which makes sense, but only provides them with sleeping bags as a means of comfort. Right. I don't care how squashy they are, but a regular <laughs> sleeping bag would still make for a terrible night's sleep on a stone floor. Yes. Now I know what you're thinking. 
Alex, the sleeping bags are obviously enchanted to be as soft as a feather mattress. <laughs> but I obviously. reject that notion. <laughs> if that was the case, why not say it? It would have only taken one more sentence. I think we need to stop using magic as an explanation for small details left out in the story. Mm -hmm. Then again, perhaps I'm being too much of a stickler. Also, if they were that comfortable, all the kids would have fallen asleep a lot sooner than they did. Yeah, but they all had something to talk about. Yeah, I guess so. But I'm with Alex, though. First thing, I was like, sleeping bags? Like, yeah. he just he just conjured these up out of nowhere. It's not like they just had them, like, stored in a closet that they had to worry about space. Like, you couldn't create some cots or more suitable bedding here? Or maybe, like, transfer all their beds from their dorms down to the... <laughs> right, yeah. Like, if you're gonna... I mean, you're using magic anyway. You're Dumbledore. Come on. Exactly. Unless... Sleeping bags is just the easiest thing. Like, yeah, maybe they right. are stored in a broom closet, and like they just had to like physically just be flown out and into the great hall. Yeah, it it, it is definitely kind of weird, but it, it makes for good visual too. When yeah. you, they're all like you think about hundreds of purple squashy sleeping bags. Sure. Yeah, it's like a uh, so. FEMA. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, but yeah, I, I guess it's something you just think of as an emergency situation. It's not a permanent thing, so you're not going to give them a more permanent bed or something. Right, right. And so, yeah, a little nitpicky there, I guess, but yeah, it never really bothered me, I guess. Sure. I, I mean, I would agree that it would be uncomfortable. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like now that I'm older, I, I, I refuse to sleep on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Like like air mattresses, I don't care how thick they are. Once you lay on them, you hit the floor. Right. So I don't know. Um, another thing in this reading is the first use that I've noticed of the word magic. When Ron tells Harry about Dumbledore taking him off the Quidditch pitch, which I've always found to be an ugly word that doesn't fit with the rest of J.K. Rowling's writing style. Hmm. Any thoughts on that? No, I don't. Yeah. I try not to question how different words are used. Yeah, and like, like it, it seems weird to say that it doesn't fit her writing style when it's it's her writing. Yeah. <laughs> so like, it's that's her style. Sure. I... And I mean, with these kind of books and stuff, I mean, they go through so many copy editors and and whatnot that like one correction, one change by somebody else might not have been picked up and changed back or whatever. Like you have to think like 90% of the words that she wrote are still the words that you read. But yeah. by the time editors and everything get done with them, it's, it's mostly still hers, but you know, some things happen. Yeah. Uh, my final thought for this email hit wizards. Seriously. That doesn't even make sense in the muggle world. A hit man is someone who kills other people for, for a living. Well, the government employs people to carry out such, such tasks, they do not use that term, and I doubt they talk about them so freely. Why not refer to them as magical tactics unit? Even the term wizard assassin would have sounded better at the very least. <laughs> Reading that term really took me out of the story for how ridiculous it sounds, especially <laughs> considering that she comes up with a much cooler sounding job title that is, as far as I can tell, do the same thing. But that doesn't come until next book. Mm. Um, so yeah, we won't dive into that too much, but I honestly, like I, I brought it up during the show term hit wizard. I, I thought it was kind of cool. Sure. I didn't have a problem with it. Yeah. I guess we're just on different wavelengths this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. So that's Alex for this week. Well, thank you, Alex. Always appreciated. Absolutely. Even if we don't agree with you. <laughs> And pick apart our show. Right. <laughs> One episode at a time. Yeah, as long as you're still listening. Um, yep. Awesome. I think that's about the show for this week, Matt. I think they're about right. Uh, I think we did a fantastic job breaking down these chapters. There was a lot a lot to unpack here, and we, we, did, we did a pretty good job, I think. Um, next week on Harry Potter and Prisoner of Azkaban drama weekly saga that we're going through here uh will be chapters 11 and 12 um i look forward to it me too it's getting good <sighs> getting real good it's getting real good a lot of a lot of questions needing to be answered immediately but 
with my luck, it's going to be a few more weeks. So, um, yeah, next week, next Monday, we will have uh, that episode, the first episode of the new year. So that should be fun. Um, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Last of 2016. Here mm-hmm. we go. Uh, I hope everybody's enjoyed the ride so far. Um, hope you're still enjoying us. Um, I, I definitely hope everybody had a happy Christmas. Um, personally, you could find me on Twitter at the noise with the Y. Uh, please be sure to follow the show on Twitter at tales from GH. Uh, and if you would like to support us and what we're doing here on this podcast, um, allow us to do more great things for the community and you guys, the listeners, um, you could do so over on Patreon, patreon.com slash tales from Godric's hollow. Uh, Matt, where could the fine people out there get a hold of you? You can always follow me personally on Twitter at, I drawn a blank. Wow. As a, <laughs> as a matter of Matt. Yes. On Twitter at, as a matter of Matt, if you want to get a hold of me at this show, uh, you can write, send us an email at tales from Godric's hollow at gmail.com. Once again, those are just go to me. Um, so if you want to write any notes in there, you don't want Josh to see, you need to talk about something that's, uh, ahead a bit. We haven't talked about it yet. It's going to be a spoiler or anything like that. Feel free to write it there. Um, those are just for my eyes only. So, yep. Trust me. If I saw all the emails that you guys were sending, um, and Matt was just lying to you all, uh, I would, I would do the show completely differently. I'm sure. Absolutely. I would know all kinds of secrets that you guys I are. think a- Alex especially can attest to that. <laughs> Definitely. Um, well, again, I hope everybody had a happy Christmas. I hope everybody has a great new year coming up this week. Um, I know it's still kind of like the holiday season for everybody, um, uh, just that time of year. Uh, so I hope everybody is staying warm, uh, staying healthy, staying happy um, as we move into 2017. Until next week, muggle out. Mischief Managed.